Spring means renewal, a rebirth. The aroma of fresh grass and blooming fills the air. Sounds of joy and hope resonate deep within us. The feeling of the warm sun welcomes us back outside to enjoy Bloomington once again. Anything is possible on the brink of summer. Yet Hoosiers know every April in Bloomington is not only a revival, but a culmination. A finale of four years, 12 long months of countless hours on the roller track and road. Sweat and tears through another lap, another mile. Teams forging bonds that will last a lifetime. For the culmination of craft, these laps around this cinder track offer nothing but harrowing uncertainty. There could be a performance of a lifetime or a shocking late lap crash. The bow is down. Several teams are down. With a perennial powerhouse of the past returning to take the crown. Jet Black, take it in the 2021 Little 500. They say world's greatest college weekend, but it's more than a weekend. This one day in April is a climax, a culmination of a year in Bloomington for Indiana University. So take a deep breath and soak it all in. Soon you'll blink and it'll all be memories. Welcome to the 2023 Little 500. What a way to welcome you to a blustery Saturday afternoon in Bloomington, Indiana. It's a special day. It is the 72nd Men's Little 500. 33 teams will try and follow Melanzana Cycling yesterday in crowning themselves champions of 2023. My name is Jack Edwards. Delighted to be alongside former Forest Cycling rider and Little 500 race director Hank Duncan. Hank, it's a special day. How are you doing today? Jack, it is the one day in April we've been waiting for all year long. Riders have been training all all year long for this 33 teams here to take home the Borg Warner trophy it's gonna be a great day let's start before this year's race let's look back at last year Phi Delta Theta brought Greek teams back to the forefront winning an absolutely thrilling race Hank you were still race director last year talk me through last year's race and the excitement it was from start to finish talk about a fast race from start to finish we knew coming into the race that Phi Kappa Psi was the team to beat we knew that they were going to make an early move and make it fast, and that they did. Around lap 100, they went for it, tried to let the field. The pack worked together, caught them, but then Cutters went off the front. Beta Sigma Psi went off the front. Kai Alpha went off the front and had about a 15-second lead late in the race. It all ended up coming together, and around one lap 199 with one lap to go, chaos happened. Oh, yes. And the entire field came to pieces. You saw it in the intro, the late lap crash, the 199 crash. You see it right here, just a little wipeout. Andrew Laval, Phi Kappa Psi can do absolutely nothing. Crashes there, Phi Delta Theta wins it. Wow, what, it was a great race last year, Hank. Phi Delta Theta and Jimmy Kulik, they came into the race with a little chip on their shoulder and they showed the entire community why they should win that trophy and that they did. Indeed, let's jump now onto this year's front. Uh, a big one that we'll talk about to kick things off is that Black Key Bulls, two titles in the last decade, not here, Hank. Tell one word, it. shocking. Yeah. Absolutely shocking. A perennial contender coming into the race as a pre-race favorite, having the top individual time trialer in the field, two other top 10 riders, and a team with the recipe for success. But to get into the race, you have to qualify. And to do that, you need to be one of the fastest 33 teams. And if you can't get in a clean run, you can't race, and unfortunately, they're not there, and that is a shame to the race today in the sport. Gavin Good, the number one overall ITT rider, was on Black Key Bulls. He won't be here. They had three of the top ten guys. They would have been a big contender. Let's talk about the contenders that are here today. Hank, tell me, when you're talking about the audience at home, who are the two teams that you got to be looking for, or multiple teams you got to be looking for? I kind of previewed a bit there, the two teams. What are you looking for today? Cutters, Sigma Phi Epsilon. Those are the teams that everybody's looking out for. The green jersey of, of Cutters has that deep team and a top sprinter ready to make a mark. Sigma Phi Epsilon, they might, they might think that of themselves as kind of a 1A favorite, but they are also deep one through four, have a great coach and a great sprinter in Will Pitts who can take it home. 
indeed. And now in terms of just the general race strategy, we saw yesterday Teeter, Melanzana going back and forth in terms of how they're going to try and attack that race. Melanzana obviously winning yesterday. What are you looking for today in terms of what teams are going to try and do? It seems like we're in a new era of Little 500 where teams are not saving their best rider for the last 20 laps. They are going out fast and hard and making it tough to dwindle down that pack as much as possible. That said, it's a very windy day. We have 15, 20, 20 mile an hour wind coming out of the west here today, which makes a breakaway very, very difficult. So we might have some dark horses who would have been sitting in the pack, getting a little bit of a better draft than they would have been and in, in waiting till sprint near the end of the race. And in terms of when you want to try and make a move if you're going to attack, what lap number, especially with this win, we'll talk about it a lot more in depth later, what lap number could you make a move at? It depends on what the goal is. If your goal is to lap the field and tear the, the pack to pieces, lap 50 is a good time, lap 100 is a good time, but if you're going to make that move, you need to complete that move or else, like you saw Teeter did yesterday, you can fall back and burn all your matches too early. So I would expect at least one team to make an early move like that, but maybe the winning move coming around lap 170 to 180, where you don't have to necessarily lap the field, but you can stay out solo for the last 20, 30 laps and take home that trophy. We're talking about some general strategy here. Let's begin to get into some specifics of some teams. For some more on cutters, let's go down to the third member of our crew, Evan Kamika, who caught up with them. Thanks, Jack. Here with Peyton Gaskill, the captain of cutters you're in green sand when you spoke at the traditions of iu a couple weeks ago you said this team is united by what it's going to take to do to win that begs me to ask the question what's going to take it to win today yeah well it's going to take everything we've got um but we've been putting in a lot of prep work throughout the year especially for torn and i the seniors it's been a long four years and we've learned a lot of lessons in the last two races and we're hoping to bring it all to today and make it count what do you think is one of those lessons that you learned especially with the win today that's going to help yeah, well, the wind can certainly be your enemy or it can be your friend, and you kind of have to uh, convince the pack to take the wind for you and um, make sure nobody's getting a free ride off of you. Last question I have. You spoke at that Traditions of IU, and you said you're most looking forward to taking that victory lap. What would it mean to take that victory lap later today? It'd mean everything. I mean, especially, like I said, Torn and I, seniors. It's been a long time, especially coming out of COVID. Uh, Little Five has been my life for a long time, um, and especially being a part of Riders Council, and, and uh, thanks to Student Foundation for keeping this tradition alive. I'm really hoping to be a part of it and, uh, you know, enter our name into the annals of Little Five history. Awesome. Well, good luck today, Peyton. Thank you. Jack, back to you. Thank you very much, Evan. Good insight from Peyton there. Him and Torin Cray Maywar, the two seniors in this team, they've been on the last two rises or third race for cutters they were second in 2021 fourth last year i mean when you think about little 500 you can't think about many other things before you get to cutters 14 time champion hank i mean tell me about him they come into the race almost every single year as the favorites or one of the favorites and this year is no different they have possibly the top sprinter in the field and Torin cray maywar sprinted as you said jack came in second in 2021 had a tough set before the sprint to even catch back up to the pack and came in fourth last year he is fired up, and I guarantee you, he wants to win this sprint if it even comes down to a sprint. Let's jump now to another team, Phi Kappa Psi. Abby Heyman is down in their pit with some more. That's right. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Carson. You were going to leave last year. You chose to stay. You had unfinished business. How does it feel that race day is finally here? You know, it feels great. I'm just fortunate to be here. Um, I think it's going to be a great outcome, and... I hope my sister's victory yesterday bodes good luck for us. So I'm just super happy to be here with my team and couldn't ask for more. That's awesome. That's what I was just going to ask. How did it feel to watch your sister, your twin sister, and her team cross that finish line yesterday? You know, it was surreal because it was her first year biking and she didn't start out the strongest, but she quickly got good and it just made me so proud. So it just inspired me to really go out there today. And that's awesome. And you guys have such an awesome fan base behind you. What does it feel to be here on race day with all of this energy? You know, they make it, honestly. Like, the send-off we have is, like, crazy cool. They're what fire us up and couldn't ask for better fans. So. That's awesome. Good luck to you, Carson. Back up to you guys. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you very much, Abby. And it was Lauren Etnire who won yesterday for Melanzana, hoping that for that and I family, we'd love to have a back-to-back -back day. Let's talk about a great weekend. That could be. I was talking about contenders in general, Hank. Phi Psi in fifth place, a team that's been in and around the last three races, but they've had some really rotten luck. It's not about 
that they've lost, it's how they have lost. 2019, eight second lead coming into the final lap, exchange, lost. 2021, lap the field, crashed, lost. 2022, tried to lap the field, came back in the final sprint, crashed, lost. This team has an unfortunate recent history. This year, Carson Nettenire, Caleb Cooper, and the team are looking to turn that around. They lose Andrew Laval from last year's team, one of the strongest riders in the field. Uh, he had some really unfortunate luck across a storied little 500 career. Let's talk about contenders in general. What do you need to have as a team to be a contender in your eyes as a guy who's been around the race for a very long time? Jack, it is a recipe of three ingredients. One, depth. Each team has up to four riders. You need at least three riders, preferably four, that can follow any move in the book. You don't need to make the move, but you need to follow the move to keep your, your best rider fresh for the end. Speaking of that best fresh rider, you need a star sprinter, preferably a top 10 individual time trialist. Most winners have that in their playbook. And number three, you need strategy, you need coaching. It's about when to use that strength to win the race. You can have strong legs, but if you use it at the wrong time, you burn those matches and you can get dropped like a rock. Let's talk about another specific team, Delta Tau Delta. Our, our man Evan Kamikau has a bit more on them. Thanks, Jack. One of the things about Delta Tau Delta is this is a fraternity now. It used to be jet black. Back in 2017, Delta Tau Delta got kicked off of campus. Thus, they had to go underground and become jet black. Now you can see behind me, they have a giant student section. And what that means now that they're a fraternity is the fact that the recruitment is a little bit different. Now, instead of going to be able to go out and recruit whoever they want off of social media and all other things, now they're a fraternity and they have a lot riding on them with a fewer members. And one of the cool things on their right thigh it's going to say Jet Black as an homage to their past. Jack, back up to you. Some great stuff on Jet Black and now Delta Tau Delta there, a team that won back in 2021. Still have Josh Herbst from that team. Should be very interesting to watch them more. Let's talk about the bikes, the literal bikes in this bike race, Hank. In terms of the switch from Schwinn to State, what the differences should the audience know about that? What changes have, have happened in the literal physical mechanics of these Absolutely. bikes? Absolutely. This has been one of the biggest, most visual changes in the Little 500 in the past decades. Starting, staying, or going to, to state bicycle, it is a more modern bicycle. You have a three-piece crank. You have deeper dish rims on that bike. It, it is essentially a more durable bike that if a rider crashes on it, you can pick it back up and keep riding on it better than those Schwinn's could. Let's keep talking about the logistics of the race. Jump now on to flags. What to expect to see start, middle, end of race. Hank, walk me through what the audience should be looking for in terms of what's being waved by our starter. So the race will start on a rolling start. We have three pace laps, and then the green flag will wave just like a motor race. Green flag is free-for-all racing until something happens to preclude that racing, specifically a crash. When there is a yellow flag, riders have to keep their distance to the leader. It is essentially like a virtual safety car in Formula One if you watch that sport. You cannot bunch back up because drafting is such a huge factor in cycling that if you lose that, that wheel in front of you, you cannot get it back freely. Red flag, that is really only when there's bad weather and, it, and the race needs to be stopped. We will most likely not have to deal with that today. Black flag and blue and orange flag, those are for riders who need to get out of the way for the leaders to come through and keep racing freely. White flag, you'll see that on 199 going into lap 200. That means one lap to go. Get ready for some fireworks. And checkered flag, you will see the winner hands up in the air yep. celebrating to this big crowd here. 200 laps away from that moment. Let's get some more insight. Trackside, Abby Heyman is with Trent McGee. That's right. Thanks, guys. Trent, so much preparation goes into this race, into today. How are you feeling that it is finally race day? It's hard to believe it. Um, it you know it by the fans. The fans out here, the energy that's here, the, the amount of work that students put in to put this on is absolutely incredible, and it's a testament to the Hoosier spirit. That's awesome. And there are over 70 alumni, former champions, that are here today. How important is that alumni fan base for IUSF, for the Little 500? 
they're woven into the fabric of what we do here. Like we don't have these teams, we don't have this race without great competition. And when they win and they're champions, it's an honor to invite them back. And I'm so glad so many took the opportunity. We had people from California, Florida, from 1954, take up tickets. It's been absolutely incredible to see them. That's so awesome. And what are you most looking forward to today? What are you most excited about? I got to say, like yesterday in the women's race, when they say mount your little 500 bicycles, I got chills. And so what I want to see is a safe, fun race and something that is competitive right towards the end. Awesome. Thank you so much, Trent. Have a great race day. Back up to you guys. Thank you very much, Abby. Great stuff from Trent, as always. Hank, let's double back the little 500. We haven't even said it for those at home who may not know, just the general rules of what the little 500 is. This is truly a unique, and I do not use that word lightly, a unique sporting event in the world, and especially in bike racing. It is modeled after the Indianapolis 500 motor race. Actually, the founder of this race, the Little 500, was the son of a past Indy 500 winner. So everything you see here is modeled after the Indy 500 qualifications. We have 39 teams qualify for this race to even be able to race today, and that is Four laps around the track, three exchanges, just like the Indy 500. Today, we have 33 teams with pit boxes all around the track with three other riders in those pit boxes ready to go. 200 laps, a quarter mile plus each lap around a cinder track, and essentially, it is run like an Indy car race, a motor race, not your typical professional cycling event. When we talk about one day in April, you know, it's it's the, it's the classic terminology for this special day. And it is a great day, women's race on Friday, men's race on Saturday, but it is a year, year round process. Tell me about what it takes to train, to be a top athlete, to even get on the track here today. What does it take to be a rider? It is a privilege to be able to race on this day. And let me tell you, these riders do not get up out of bed a few weeks before and start training for this <laughs> event. They start training in June, in July. Once this school year ends, they're in training for next year's race, doing long 13 to 15 hour weeks, just getting those base miles in. When they come back to school in August, they're doing group rides. They're riding with each other. And that is one unique thing about this race is that all these teams are classmates, they're friends. Yeah. They train together, they know everything there is to know about their skills, their weaknesses, and their strategies coming into this race. Coming into December and January, you have riders riding on the collegiate road riding circuit, going out to other Midwestern universities to ride for Indiana University as a whole. But then February and March, track practice. They're up here at this track every single day doing track-specific workouts, working on those short, intense efforts like you'll see today with 10 to 15, maybe 20 lap sets, not your typical one to two hour sets that you'll see in other cycling events, culminating with qualifications, individual, individual time trials, which is a four lap race around the track, testing your pure grit and strength, missing out, which tests who the best sprinters are, and then Team Pursuit, which is the best unit as a team, the best four riders around the track for 15 laps, all leading up to today to see who gets crowned champion. An incredibly detailed process. Let's get some more insight on one of the top contenders today. Evan, what you got? Yeah, Jack, top contender, but a family of a team pretty much. We're talking about SIGEP. SIGEP has a very awesome family connection. They're a team that primarily recruits down in Zionsville, Indiana, specifically Drew Gavitt, their captain. His father is actually the head coach. He's been the coach of SIGEP for the past 11 years, and he won it in 2015. And funny enough, Drew and one of his teammates, Will, who's a junior, actually got recruited to be on this SIGEP team. So it just shows how deep this family connection and Zionsville connection runs on that SIGEP team down in pit number two. Jack, back to you. Thank you very much, Evan. Three-time titleists back in 2015, the last time that SIG EP won. If, if you're a SIG EP, or if you're a Cutters, Hank, and you know the field is marking, you know the field has an eye on you, how does that change your strategy? What are you doing if you're in the spot of, of a leader where you've got the other 31 teams or the 32 teams with their eyes right on you? You have to be sneaky, Jack. You have to be absolutely sneaky. You cannot have your top riders in for cutters, Torn Craig Mayor, Peyton Gaskell, Judah Thompson on the bike, and Will Pitts and Drew Gavette for Sig F on the bike making that move because everybody <laughs> in the stadium knows they're going to make a move and they're going to chase them. 
what they need to do, in my opinion, is have one of those three or four riders, the, the lesser known riders on their teams, go out for a burn, for an exchange, hope that they get a gap, ride an extra lap or two to, to increase that gap, then get their strong riders on the bike with an existing gap there. And once that gap's there, not many riders, if any, are going to chase down those star riders that SIGAP and Cutters have. Let's go back down to the track with Abby Haymond. All right, guys, I am here with the 500 Festival Princesses. How are you guys feeling being here on race day? We feel amazing. We love the little 500. We got to come to the women's race yesterday as well, and it's just so great to support all the students out there biking today. That's so awesome. And what are your guys' responsibilities as the 500 Festival Princesses? Yeah, so we represent the 500 Festival, and we celebrate the Indianapolis 500 and the 500 Festival up to the month of May. Um, and we volunteer, we go to events, and we just spread the cheer and the joy of the month of May in Indiana. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Have a great race day. Thank you very much, Abby. Some more great insight on just the general festivities and just the great day around Little 500. We've gotten a lot of insight from you, Hank, in terms of just kind of the history, the, the top contenders here today. Let's kind of talk I think, a bit more about the field in general and just kind of what you could see um, happen here today. What kind of race are you expecting? Any teams you might be looking out for um, beyond the ones we kind of hit on already? Look out for Alpha Sigma Phi and Delta Tau Delta down on that fourth row. Alpha Sigma Phi, a second year team building up from scratch. They have three great riders who can really make a difference and follow those top teams to victory this race. And then Delta Del Delta, we mentioned them earlier, but Josh Herbst already has one ring. Yep. You could call him the best sprinter in the field. Don't you dare overlook him come lap 198, 199, because if he's there, he can beat anybody in this field. Two other dark horses, though, to really look into if you're going to go down the field, Chi Alpha, Beta Sigma Psi. Chi Alpha 2021 came in fourth with riding only three riders in the race. 2022, they came in seventh. But guess what? They made a potential winning move later in the race that didn't end up working, but they had the strength to even do it and had a half lap off on the field late into this race. Beta Sigma Psi, they might not have that star top 10 rider, but one through four, their riders are deep. With Ben McEwen, Michael Dubois, and Paul Smith, they have a team that can follow just about anybody in the field. Don't count them out for a podium. Don't count them out for podium. And, and kind of just looking at some of the best riders in the field, just individually, you mentioned those those top 10 sprinters, top 10 ITT riders. It's very interesting. We haven't even mentioned yet, and Sigma Alpha Epsilon, they're third in the poll. They may be a little dis disrespected by us, Hank. We haven't even talked about them yet. And they have the, I guess, best rider in the field when you remove Gavin Good from the fact, because he's not going to be riding here today. You are absolutely right, Jack. Luke Noss, his second year in the Little 500, his parents are star athletes his dad is coaching them today he is the number one individual time trialer racing today in this race my one big question for them is experience and strategy they are strong and they have a couple good riders to support luke later in the race but they're new to cycling when do they use that strength when do they make those moves and follow the riders? How do they make those exchanges and burns? And if they make it at the wrong time, those top teams like Sig, Sig F and Cutters, they will blow them away in the distance. We're having the starting riders come out to the bikes after we've had all 33 teams have their names read out and have their walk across the track. Some are having more brisk walk than others to get back to their spots. I'm going to run you through the top 10 really quick while we have a moment. And just in terms of those ITT placements, it was Gavin Good for BKB, Luke Nas for Sigma Alpha Epsilon, Judah Thompson and Torin Cray Maywar, both for cutters. That's a dynamic duo. Judah Thompson might be the, high, the highest touted recruit to come into <laughs> Little 500 in years. He's from Bloomington, Indiana. He is known worldwide in the cycling community. Watch out for him to make a splash in his first Little 500 race. And he's got both Torn and Peyton Gaskill in terms of guys who are in their third race on cutters who can offer him the experience that he hasn't had yet. People think that Torn is going to be the sprinter for cutters, but if things don't go right in terms of strategy or timing-wise, Peyton Gaskill, 
is a sprinter. And if he's there, then he knows where to position himself and knows how to beat other sprinters to that finish line. Let's bring you through more of this top 10. Will Pitts for Sigma Phi Epsilon, Connor Berry, Alpha Sigma Phi, Josh Herbst, Delta Tau Delta, William Wagner, and Jack Henlos, both BKB riders. It just underscores. Disappointing. And BKB, they had a dominant, dominant team. But it just comes down to putting a qual time on the board, which, and let's actually kind of talk about quals really briefly. I actually have the tenth one before I forget. Garrett Cortez of Alpha Sigma Phi, the other guy there. In terms of quals, what kind of goes into getting a good time and, and the structure of quals in general? To have a good quals time, you need to have smooth exchanges and good sprinting speed. Again, it is four laps around the track, and if you have a four-rider team, each rider goes and does one lap as fast as possible. It's about a 35-second effort, if that, comes into the start-finish line, and you, and you have to make a legal exchange, which means an exchange within a 32-foot area, which is the length of two pit boxes, with your teammate, hand off the bike to them, go, go and do that another three times. Blackie Bulls, unfortunately, could not do that this spring. We'll take a brief pause from our discussions of the teams, give you some more of the festivities and the general vibe here at Bill Armstrong Stadium. The PA announcer, Jeremy Gray, and some singers will take you from here. Stripes and bright stars fill the perilous fire. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the As the starting riders come to the start finish line and we get ready for racing, we present Indiana University's men's a cappella group another round who will perform back home again in Indiana.
how I long for my Indiana home. Back home again in Indiana, and it seems that I can see the gleaming candlelight still shining bright through the sycamores for me. The new mown hay sends all its fragrance from the fields I used to roll. When I dream about, when I dream about, about the Wabash, how I long for my Indiana. If you are in the infield and not wearing official credentials as a participant or official, please move into the stands or spectator areas. Only properly accredited personnel are permitted on the infield. We now welcome to the stage today's race starter, a member of the 1988 Wilkie Sprint Team, Carrie Helmuth. Ride smart, keep your head up, good luck, and Godspeed. And now, the words we've all been waiting to hear. Gentlemen, mount your little 500 bicycles! that we've been wanting to hear. They've mounted their bicycles. The pace laps are about to get underway. Let's break down our main rows, our teams that will be featuring here today. Row one, cutters, Sigma Phi Epsilon, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, a strong trio right there. Sig up cutters, those are the two teams we are looking for to make the moves. They are deep, they are fast, they have experience. Heading now into row two. It's an interesting trio here. Alpha Kappa Psi, Phi Kappa Psi, Phi Gamma Delta. Fiji, they're rebuilding a little bit, but don't sell them short. They have, they have history. And Faisai, again, tragic recent history. <laughs> they're looking to turn that around this year. And a very, a very interesting row three. Kai Fai, Chinzano, and Human Wheels. Not a single vet rider in this row. Human Wheels, Kai Fai, brand new team. So excited to see them call in the top 10. Chinzano finished and called 33rd last yep. year. Top 10 now. Good job for them calling top 10. And now into row four. And a couple of interesting teams you mentioned already, Alpha Sigma Phi, Delta Tau Delta, and Pi Kappa Alpha. ASIG, they have three great riders that can follow anybody. Delta Tau Delta, Delta, they have that strong sprinter and Josh Herbst within. Watch them throughout this race. Now heading into row five, Alpha Kappa Lambda, Chi Alpha and Grey Goat. Chi Alpha, they have good coaching, good history. Jonathan Fraser and Spencer Pewitt, watch them throughout this race. Dark Horse, top five or podium pick. And now heading into the next row, it's Ghost Cycling, Phi Sigma Kappa, and Novus Cycling. Ghost Cycling, they had a good team pursuit time. They are always a good unit. Watch for those ghost exchanges throughout this race where nobody touches the bike yep. at one point in time. And now we got the next row, CSF Cycling, Beta Sigma Psi, and Sigma Nu, a team we mentioned already in Beta Sig. Beta Sig, Paul Smith, Ben McEwen, Michael Dubois, they are three veteran riders returning from last year. They made some good moves last year in the race to make a move with cutters. They can follow anybody. Row eight, 3PH cycling, Delta Sigma Pi, and Lambda Chi Alpha. 3PH came in fifth in 2019. Great coaching on that front. Rishi Poladasu, Paul E, Ben Baines, Max Reset to Winkle. Experienced team, smart team strategically. Forest cycling, Phi Delta Theta, the defending champions, and Evan Scholars next Phi row. Delta is rebuilding this year, but again, with that yellow jersey, anything is possible. The sky is the limit. Tau Epsilon Phi, IUDM Cycling, Bears make up the penultimate row. IUDM Cycling, watch for Lucas Troutman to ride over 100 laps this race. He is a great rider. That team is relying on him to stay with that lead pack. Wild Ace of Cycling, Army Cycling, and Beta Theta Pi round us out here today. Wild Ace of Cycling, one of the coolest stories in the race. Taylor Gassman, nine years in the Navy, back to IU on the GI Bill. His wife 
rode for DG in the race, and now he's in this community. Excited to be here. We got a huge gust of wind right here. Let's talk about the weather now with Abby Heymond. That's right. Thanks, guys. As we know, yesterday the women's race was postponed due to heavy rain on and off all morning, and fortunately things cleared up, but that led to a lot of pooling up of water and lots of divots on the track, and that is referred to as the track being soupy, and that's exactly what we had yesterday, but today that is making for great track conditions. It makes it damp, it makes it compact, and those cinders, it's going to make for a very fast race today. But if you cannot tell, we have heavy winds here. So more on that. Evan, over to you. Thanks, Abby. I'm no meteorologist, but I'm going to pull out my credential, and you can see how windy it is when my credential is flowing into the face. We're here at turn three, one of the most dangerous turns on the track. And with the wind blowing into the face of the riders, it's going to make it really difficult for them to power up for that final stretch. Now the riders are just about coming past us, and the race is about to begin. One major special day here in April. Jack, let's get it going. Let's get it going, Evan. Thank you very much. The pace cars off the track. It's bikes only for the next 200 laps, the two plus hours. Strap in. Get yourself ready. Hank, I'm excited to be here. For what the a day running. it is, Jack. Oh. What a day. Here we go. Green flag is waving. Oh, a special day. The green flag goes. The green jersey goes first. The 70 second running of the men's little 500 is underway. We are looking to push the pace out fast early because there is almost always a wreck in the first 10 to 15 laps. Those teams, especially Beta Sigma Psi, 3PH, IUDM, want to move the field as quickly as possible. But we see Cutters and Jacob Kuhn, a yep. surprise starter rider, pushing the pace in that first lap, handing it off to Will Pitts. Their star sprinter, so Sigup and Cutters going, going with two different strategies early on to start this race. Very differing strategies to open things up here. It is indeed Will Pitts, and we're having a very early move up into the very front from Beta Sigma Psi. Beta Sigma Psi, wonderful move from starting 20th all the way going to the pole position. I think that's Ben McEwen out there. He knew what to do. He knew what his job was within one lap of the race. They are out of that 20th place and into first. Now he can settle in and enjoy this first set. Looks like it might have been Paul Smith who's in that first group, but regardless, Beta Sigma Psi jumping up very quickly from their row to get up high. Sigma knew a nice surprise team leading the field early on. Good for them to move up. I did not really see them moving up that much in the field. Smart riding from Sigma Nu and Quinn Panucci. Cutter's willing to fall in to about sixth place right now. Quinn Panucci, indeed the man who's leading things off. He's actually high. riding everybody off his wheel right now. <laughs> He's giving a healthy lead to get things going here. We've got two laps under our belt. We're on to lap three already. We've got a massive crash here in turn two. Several bikes down. We'll get you one that looks like it's... There, are, it looks like seven or eight riders down. Four cyclings down. It looks like Five Sigma Kappa's down. Wild Aces might be down. Army's down. Human Wheels is down. Tau Epsilon Phi's down. Grey Goat is down. There are a lot of riders down right now trying to catch back up, but the flag stays green. Wow. It, lo it looks like Forest Cycling is leading the charge back up to the field. Let's see if they can get back up there. The, qu the pack is not flying right now. Army is right behind them, and you have Wild Aces, Phi Sigma Kappa, Grey Goat, and then Human Wheels trailing. Any wind coming into that factor there, Hank? You think in that turn two? I, I have to say so, because when you turn when you go around turn two, that 15 mile an hour wind pushes you in the face and makes the whole pack slow down. And if you're not ready for it, the pack bunches up, widens out, and a rubber wheels can happen, especially in the first few laps of this race, with the emotion, the adrenaline happening happening going on around the field, crashes are going to happen. Well, that was a massive crash in turn two to get things going just a few laps into the race, and those teams having to try and work their way back up. And it looks like Kai Alpha in a great position right now as Fiji takes the lead. Someone's streaming from the outside. Evan the Scholars side. looking to make the first exchange of the race possibly, but in a great position. The pack is speeding up a little bit. Forest Cycling actually making the first exchange of the race. They are still behind trying to catch up, but Evan Scholars pushing the pace right now. Following in right in behind is Fiji. 
This pack is motoring along. They sense danger, and they want to spread this out to make it as safe and fast as possible so those trailing teams do not catch back up. A 38-second lap last time out for Evan Scholars. A surprising from 27th qual position. They currently lead out in the front. And they're just kind of leading. They're not even going for a, a burn here at this moment. They're just trying to pull off in the front, coming now on the inside. Here comes Go Cycling on the inside, followed by Sig Epp and Kai Alpha right behind them. Some good strategy from some mid to low qualifying teams already getting up to the front to avoid that first collision. We all knew it was coming and it came early and it came hard. Kai Alpha going out on the inside, allowed to go up front by Sig Epp. Don't look now, but out of those teams that crash, it looks like Forest Cycling is trying to catch back up on yeah. the back of the pack there. Let's go down now to Evan Kamikau who has more on the crash spot. I know. That's right, Jack, here we're at turn two where that crash happened. What ended up happening was the Pike Rider, Owen, went down first, causing a bunch of other teams to spiral and fall on top of them. Lucky enough, most of those teams seem to be getting back in the pack, but right now Pike really far out of it. An unfortunate start for Pike today, but again, a lot of laps to go, a lot of time left to catch up. Jack? Yeah, it looks like it was Pike that was the only team that couldn't make or get back on their bike. Cutters kind of pull off on the front. And here comes Lucas Troutman and IUDM. Again, yeah. a rider to look for to ride 100 plus laps today. He is not going to get off the bike anytime soon. Great job from him to get up to the front. Not many of those teams from that early crash have caught back on. That pack is still staying together, but I... You got Forrest Beeline looks like to be in the back of the pack to try and just get in the back of this lead pack. There are nerves in the field today. They know it's windy. They know need, they know they need to go fast. I expect a hot race from start to finish. Here's Just as Cutters and Jacob Kuhn keep pushing that pace. Delts right behind them. SAE and and Sig up right behind them as well. They know what they need to do. It's John Peterson on the bike for Delta Tau Delta. Going up on the inside. Now is SAE again. Here comes, I believe that's Luke Noss on the bike again. Their star rider. Look for him to be sprinting near the end of this race the top individual time trialist in the race today, leading the pack at the moment. Wow, what a, what a, a frenetic opening nine laps. As we have our first lap team in Pi Kappa Alpha, unfortunately involved yeah. in that crash, as Evan said, they are now a lap down and back in that field. Gonna be some tough sledding for them to get back into things. Once the team is a lap down, as we see, it looks like Kai-Fi making exchange behind the pack. Indeed. But once a team is a lap down, it is incredibly hard to get it back unless chaos is ensued in the pack. So I, I feel bad for Pike Alpha Alpha. They trained all year for this. Yeah. But crashing early, a lap down, looks like their hopes of a top five or top ten finish are yeah, slim to none. In a rough spot. But again, just to reiterate, that was a turn two crash very early on. Wiped out about seven or eight teams. There was a pit crash as well. Small one there, but we've avoided things here. How strung out does this look to be in your estimation, Hank, in terms of this lead? Well, this just lead as you group? say that, Cutters and Jacob Kuhn making another push to the front. Yeah. It, they're not making an exchanges. They're just trying to test the waters and see which teams are able to follow right now. You see the normal contenders up there, your Fijis, Five Size, Delts, Beta Sigs, IUDMs, and, and Five Delts up there. But this is a pretty frenetic start to the race. In past years, we've seen the pack calm down a good amount after the first few laps. That crash, I think, sparked a bit of adrenaline in, in everybody. And it, it's going a bit faster than I thought it would. Yeah, it looks like CSF is making a big burn out in the front, not being marked here. Yeah, that's Kyle Preston out there. Great burn. This is what we want to see from exchanges early on. They're on the, they're in one of those backstretch pits. Nobody following them. Fiji yep. just still taking the pull. Phi Sigma Kappa up there. Phi Sai up there. Just chilling all along, and you'll about to see CF, CSF come strong, back strong into the exchange. pack in a second as they enter the camera. Very strong exchange. Still got a, a solid lead here. Coming up now is Phi Delta Theta. First time seeing them in the race. Phi Delta Theta, even though they only qualified 26, they are wearing that yellow jersey. They have Eli Kona on the bike right now. Don't sell them short. They have experience. They have the coaching needed. They might not be as deep as last year, but they are no slouch of a team. CSF, Cutters, and Kai Alpha, your top three as things stand. 
and behind the pack, about half a straightaway, Grego is still trying to catch up from that early crash, about a half a straightaway behind. They are hurting right now, but they might, if the pack keeps slowing down like this, they might be able to catch back up. It was a 44 second lap last time out for CSF Cycling. That actually included their exchange 43 seconds for the general lead lap. Now in the next five to 10 laps, look out for the top teams to yeah. start exchanging and making their first moves of the race. You'll see some of the other teams make the moves around right now, lap 12 to 15, but your SAE, SIG Eps, Cutters, Delts, Five Size, wait until about lap 20 to maybe 25 to make the moves, and you will see the pack split up, that rubber band stretch out as each team marks each other and, want, and doesn't want to give any team any space at all. Sigma Alpha Epsilon, the team currently stretching out this lead group. It's Luke Noss out up front at a 24 mile an hour lap last time, 38 seconds. He's followed closely behind by Sigep. I'm a bit surprised by the strategy from SAE and Luke Noss because yeah, they don't have the deepest team out there. I would assume that they wanted to sit in and not pull and push the pace because they want to save Luke for the end. They yep. are, he is their star rider and he should not be burning any energy right now. He is burning a lot. He's currently about fifth in that first front, front chunk of the race. Here comes Alpha Sigma Phi. First time we've mentioned them today. They are up in a great position. It looks like Connor Barry, their number six individual time trialist, is on the bike right now. Again, he might not be the best sprinter in the field, but in terms of overall endurance, he can follow anybody and make the moves to break away. And Cutters moving themselves back into the front. Still is Jacob Kuhn, who's got himself on the bicycle. It looks like Tal Epsilon Phi on the backstretch is gearing up for an exchange. They're about a half lap back from that crash, trying to catch back up. Good bike to bike exchange, getting back on the bike again. They need to work with somebody before they get lapped to get back into this race. It looks like it's. It looks like Alpha Sigma yeah, Phi Barry. now going out for a big old burn. They have a bike ready in the pit going around turn three. No mark here, and it's going to be a big chance for Barry to get a bit of a stretch here. This is exactly what ASIG wanted. Not one of those top two pre race favorites. Not being marked. Great burn. Tag. There is the exchange. Jump on that bike clean and he gets his filter back in right when AK Psy makes another exchange, another good burn. Let's see if he jumps on, he'll filter into the back of the pack. Great first exchanges by Alpha Kappa Psy and Alpha Sigma Phi. Carson Heath gets on the bike for A Sig. He's their number 15 time trialist. A new time trialist, I should say. Number two rider on that team. Get on the bike is John Bularelli. Four AK Psy. And here comes, it looks like Kai Fi yep. and Hunter Eisler making a burn. I bu They're going to be marked here, or at least trying to get a draft following up behind them. Is that Beta Sigma Psy coming around? It looks like it is. Here comes Beta Sigma making oh, a full lap burn. Cutters as well, preparing for an exchange here. I think so here come the over. top teams making exchanges. Oh. Beta Sigma Psy. Ooh, a bit of a collision there between these two riders. Kai Fi and Pi Kappa Alpha, yeah. some bad communication. That is one thing to really pay attention to this race is when teams exchange next to each other, how do they communicate? We saw it yesterday in, in the women's race with Kappa Alpha Theta and CSF, some bad communication, crashes happened and ruined both of their races. And that just, it looked like the same thing happened with Kai Fi and Pike. Looks like it's gonna be Peyton Gaskell preparing to come on the bike for cutters in a moment. Here Kuhn comes Beta Sigma Psi and Go Cycling and then 3PH all exchanging at the same time. Oh, Cutter's making an exchange Cutter's well. making a crazy move for an exchange. Not the best burn there, but here comes Peyton Gaskell, their senior rider on Riders Council. This pack is spreading out like a rubber band. Fisai also preparing for an exchange, as is Delts. as is SAE. Delts is coming in for an exchange on the back stretch here. Let's see what happens. Looks good on the back stretch. They're getting back on, but the pack is splitting up as Sigma Phi Epsilon is in the lead right now. Yeah, Sigep and SAE both making exchanges here on this turn one pits. Sigep coming in, SAE coming in, but Phi stays out. They bluffed it, and Phi has a gap now with Fiji chasing him. This could be an early, unexpected move from Phi as SAE and Sigep get back onto the bike. Fine, Rhett, and they're back in the pack. Rhett Skvarna getting on the bike for SAE, but it is going to be a massive opportunity for Phi to pull off. Trying to chase them down is Fiji. Those two have about a half straightaway edge over the rest of the chasing pack after some exchanges made by the other contending teams. Phi with a huge gap right now. What a great burn plus one, meaning that they win an extra lap to get that gap. They have about a straightaway and a half gap on this field now. Fisai coming in for the exchange. And comes off for Cooper. 
And on the other end, it's Gudeman off for Jake Herendine. And those two, two strong good. riders. If Fosley wants to, they can make a little break for uh, they're it. They're not going to. It looks like they're just going to ride tempo and give this next rider a nice early first lap start into the race to get his legs warmed up as the pack comes by. So why right there for Faisai? You have a huge edge right there. Are you not pushing that one after you make the exchange? He's falling right back into this lead lap. If you make that move at lap 21 of the race, <laughs> you are committing yourself to pain for the next two hours. And again, Faisai, they're a good team. They are not as deep as they have been. And they, I think, made the smart decision to say, look, we made a good strategic move. Our next rider is safe and in the pack fresh let's keep it that way as nova cycling with a good burn again unmarked their pit is on the back stretch over there qualifying 18th great burn from them they're coming in for the exchange let's take a brief it, th this will be a single bike exchange rider starts running excuse me it is a two bike exchange they're back on and back into this pack let's take a brief pause on the action down track side abby Haymond is with president pamela witten that's right, thanks guys. I am here with President Pamela Witten of IU and this is your second year here experiencing Little Five. The energy, the atmosphere, it's almost indescribable. How are you feeling that race day is finally here? It is a special day. It's Little Five weekend in Bloomington, Indiana. It doesn't get better than this. You're right, such a crazy experience. And this is just such a special experience here. Talk to me about what happens, um, how this event is so important to Indiana, to IU. Well, there is no place that you go in the state of Indiana where people don't know what you mean when you say little five. It's just, a, it's it's part of our DNA, it's who we are, and you feel it creeping up on you in April, and then the weekend hits, and, and the place just blows up. It's so much fun. That's right, thank you so much. Back up to you guys. Some great stuff from Pam Witten right there. We have a big move here though. Cutters with a bit of a burn up front, not being chased too tightly by Sigap walking through that Hank. Peyton Gaskill just shocked the field and went up for an early burn. He's only been on the bike for about seven to eight laps now. And, but on that last lap, he tried to make, make an exchange. The bike was not ready, had to make an extra lap. His legs are burning up with lactic acid. And as he comes in for the exchange, it should be clean. But the pack and Sigma Phi Epsilon have already caught them and they do not have as big of a gap as they would want it as their main sprinter, Torian Craig Mayor, comes back on and Sigma Phi Epsilon has a solo lead. And we can tell just from the alarm bells that went off from that Sig App rider, they are marking one yeah. team and one team only, and that <laughs> is Cutters. They were not only to have that happen. Falling back in, though, is Sig App after that. They've now got Cray May War on the bike. Still no Judah Thompson. They've gotten only to three out of their four for Cutters in that top team. Going up front, I think it looks to be for a burn. Here comes Phi Gamma Delta Fiji. Yeah, they're not making an exchange, though. They're just trying to burn off the front. There is no rider ready for them in the pit. And that Fiji rider is confused. He is soft pedaling out front now. Yeah. Does not yeah, really know what to do. I think he expected. He's, he's got down, uh, pats down towards the ground from his pit. They're saying slow back down, get back in the pack. I think he burned a bit too excessively there. And that might just be early race nerves from that rider. You know, you have trained all year for this race and you want to show everybody what you got early on, but it's a long race. It's a two hour, 15 minute race. Slow it down, save your legs for later when it's needed. Let's give you a full reset of the field and where we're at right now in 33rd, Phi Sigma Kappa will go from 33rd to first, Wild Aces, Tau Epsilon Phi, Army, Human Wheels, Pi Kappa Alpha, Alpha Kappa Lambda, Gray Goat, Beta Theta Pi, Kai Phi, Sin Chinzano, excuse me, Forest, CSF Cycling, 3PH, IUDM, Beta Sigma Psi, Alpha Kappa Psi, Phi Delta Theta, some massive moves there, throwing me off a little bit. In 13th now is Phi Kappa Psi, Ghost Cycling in 12th, Alpha, Ka Alpha Kappa Psi, Bears, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, Phi Delta Theta, Alpha Sigma Psi, Alpha Sigma Phi, excuse me, Sigma Phi Epsilon, Chi Alpha, Phi De Gamma Delta, Cutters, Delta Tau Delta, and Evans Scholars as things stand. 26 laps have been scored. Hank, can, can you believe we're only one ace through this race? It's been incredible so far. Time flies when you're having fun, Jack. So no real exchanges in this near side pitch. We got Chinzano preparing for an exchange probably on the next lap here, but they're trying to get back into the lead pack. So when you're looking at the pack right now, you see 
It looks like Chinzano's preparing for an exchange, but when you look at the pack right now, they are about four to five wide at times. This means that the pack is not going quickly at yeah. all. That riders are okay taking that win because they're not using that much effort. When you see the pack stretch out like a rubber band and go single file, that is when those riders are in that pain cave trying to just hold that wheel in front of them. But that cutter's rider, Torin, yeah. he is looking around just waiting for somebody to pull. Uh, and it is, uh, it is pretty slow at this moment. It is indeed. Torin Cray Maywar. Uh, on for cutters. It looks like Sigap is going to make an exchange here. I'm going to point up one finger. Nova cycling. It looks like they're trying to burn, but the pack is just holding on to them as they finally get a gap. But Sigma Nu with a great yeah. burn, flying out in front of this pack. Sigma Nu has been an impressive team early on they for me. Got an exchange here in the back stretch. Rider exchange, single bike, runs, gets the bike, jumps on. Looks good. Great form. Get up to speed. I would get out of saddle if I were him. He's not. That's okay because he has the great gap in front of the pack to just soft pedal. Coast SAE back in. also making a bit of a burn here, trying to catch up. Following them tightly, though, is Delta Tau Delta. They don't have somebody prepped for an exchange. They're just marking that, as is Torn behind him. They're not pushing back into the inside. Here comes an SAE. How good, how well can they make this exchange? A little bit rough. Good recovery on the bike. Lucas Lemia is the man getting on the bike. He needs to catch up to the pack very quickly. He's behind a little bit, but he'll do that fine. Just as we say that Sigma Phi Epsilon, yep. Sigma up in that black jersey, they are going out for a massive burn, and Cutters kind of chasing them, but not wanting to use that much effort. Yeah. So Sig up with a great burn as they go on to make an exchange on lap 29. Max Martin prepping to get onto the bicycle for them. And it is Cutters are trying to take advantage of the brief exchange time. Kai-Fi also making an exchange. They're getting back into the race there. Cutters making a big move right now, knowing that Sig up is making an exchange and back off. So they are splitting the field. It is Cutters, Fiji, and it looks like Kai Alpha in front of the field. And they now sit up a little bit knowing that nobody yeah. is a threat. But again, they're just playing with the field. You kind of know what teams to look out for, which teams made that gap, which ones didn't. So watch out for Fiji and Kai Alpha later in this race because they follow, they're the only two teams that were able to follow Cutters on that little push. We've got an Alpha Kappa Psi burn as well. Cray Maywar is using that to get a bit of leverage. Man, they are going wide here. And we're seeing Torn up front is dominating that. We've got coming into the race for the first time. Peter Schultz is coming on. And man, he's Cray Maywar is letting it kind of spread back out, get a little bit wider, almost three bikers wide. And now going on the outside, looks like it's Beta Sig making a move on the outside. And one thing that we missed man, a few a laps ago. Looks like they're making a bit of a push there, but I don't think they're going for an exchange here. I think it's going for a burn. Beta Sig making a big push out in the front. You are absolutely right, Jack. No Beta one marking. Or I misidentified them there. I have indeed. That is Delta Sigma Pi that in front Sigma there. Pi, yeah. And Cutters makes an exchange kind of behind the pack. Yeah, Judah Thompson coming on the bike. His first time on the bicycle. That was not a great burn by Torin. Yeah, that was a bit and of an interesting Judah, one. And Judah, he'll be fine catching back up, but using a little bit more energy than he would like as Delta Sigma Pi comes in for an exchange on the back stretch. That's his Delta Tau Delta. Tat makes the tag. Human we Oh, and Human Wheels gets caught up with the outgoing rider from Delta Sigma Pi. Oh, and man. they are caught up behind. He recovered. He's fine. But he lost a few seconds of time right yeah. there. Crucial time that he could have used to catch up to that pack in front of him. Judah Thompson chasing back up in for cutters. 3PH leading out this pack. Are they burning or just pulling right That's now? Ben Baines. He missed last year's race with a broken collarbone. He's up in front right now. They haven't got someone prepped for an exchange in this near corner. He's just pulling at the very front of the pack. Right behind him is Fidel Theta. But here comes a bike in that 3PH pit down in turn four. It looks like it's going to be Rishi Poludasu is getting ready to come on the bicycle for them. And ASIG is also readying themselves for an exchange. This pack is spreading out. You have Fidel right behind them. Faisai, Sigep, SAE, Fiji chasing as well. Faisai coming in for an exchange. But there are some great teams following them. And Max Barton says, uh-uh, you're not getting any gap here. I'm taking that lead from you. Faisai makes an exchange as well. Get on the bike, Albert Schaefer. This field is marking everyone today. It, this makes it an exciting race because nobody's getting any gap. 
no gap at all for anybody here. The wind is still kicking in, being a huge factor. We had an early crash on lap two or three. We've been, you know, knock on wood, don't want a commentator's curse here, relatively clean since. Judah Thompson going on the outside, making a big move. SAE and Sig F to the top three in that exact order oh, right now. Oh, and it looks Literally. like SAE almost overlapped wheels with Sig F. That would have been huge. That was a close move. When you are a cyclist, you need to put your front wheel in a safe position. That SAE rider did not do that, luckily. Nothing came out of it, but that was dangerous. Front eight riders are all strung out. Now slowing down is Judah Thompson, and he's allowing riders to go past him. And here comes Fiji, Fiji with yep. a big burn. Nobody following. It really looks like Cutters and Sigup are just eyeing each other, looking yeah. at each other. They say, Fiji, if you want to go for it, go for it, because we know that we're the strongest teams today. And now Fiji preparing for an exchange. Coming on the bike, Will Barashim. Coming off of it is Jake Herendine. They bring on their rookie rider, the sophomore, in his first race. Exchanges are an interesting concept. There are two types of exchanges. You have bike to bike that we just saw with Fiji and single bike. Single bike exchanges are faster. You gain about two to three seconds per exchange, but they're much riskier. And you see a lot of teams, especially early on in the race, use bike to bike exchanges just to simply safely get back in the pack, not risk it. Phi Delta Theta, yeah. looks like teams are marking them, oddly enough. They have that yellow jersey. It's got a bit of flash to it, about a bit of attraction. It puts a mark on your back. Fidel is trying to burn, but Judah Thompson, Max Martin, and Lucas Lemmy on their tails, not letting as them is, get any room at all. This is Josh Herbst on the bike for Delta Tau Delta. And this pack has split up. You yeah. have a front pack of about eight riders, and then about... Crash on the back stretch. Oh, that's a fun. That's Sig App who's Sig down right Ep there. Sig App is down on the back stretch. This is alarm bells going off for them, and the pack knows it too. They're back on the bike, and they're trying to catch themselves back up. The bike looks functional, but they're preparing for an exchange. They're saying just hustle back. And who has not gotten on the bike on the bike yet for Sig App is Drew Gavette. So he is preparing to get the bike. But he's got to Will wait. they have time to get the bike over into the pit? I'm not sure but they will. Cutters, Delts, SE all pushing the pace. As Max Martin goes another lap because the bike isn't ready, they are suffering wow. right now. This is trouble for SIGF at lap 38 in the race. Yeah, huge crash in 38. We'll get you a replay if we can at some point of what happened in the back stretch back there, or at least some insight. Fight out to Theta, looks like they got caught up with them back there. Sig up still about a straightaway back from the pack, but Judah Thompson has not pulled off yet. He is using his energy to pull away. He does not care about saving energy right now. He knows what his role is, and it is to ride long, hard laps as Sig F is exchanging behind the pack right yeah. now to Drew Gavette. Yeah. Let's see what he can do. He is a senior rider, Riders Council Secretary, a top 10 rider in the field, not the best mount from him. He's got an entire straightaway practically, maybe even a little bit more trying to catch up, but Judah Thompson not pushing things too hard at the front. Herbst is rounding him on the outside to take the first position, and he's pulling out front for Delta Tau Delta. If I'm the pack right now, I push it as hard as possible because you have the number two team in the field down a straightaway and a half right now. This is big for them. Josh Herbst, though, not going that hard. And SAE waves off an exchange. I think we might try and see Skvarn, I believe, is on the bike. Maybe it's Lemmy's on the bike. Try and make a push here. We've seen Sigap, who is quite a distance behind after their crash he in the back stretch. He is catching up, though, yeah, slowly SAE, but surely. SAE is going to be marked by both Delta Tau Delta and Judah Thompson is going to fall in behind Herbst. They're going to make an exchange here on the near side. SAE, a clean race so far. I am happy to see that. They are a strong team, and if they can stay clean, they can be there to the end. Good burn. Coming into the pit, bike to bike. They need to slow down. Tag. A little up strong. and back on. Good yeah. exchange from them. They're bringing on Skvarna onto the bicycle. Coming off was Lemmy. And now go cycling out for an exchange as this big pack comes back together as it slows down a little bit. Yeah, go cycling pulling off on the front. Nobody marking Ghost. In the back stretch. Great burn from them. So they're coming around turn three. Their pit is outside of turn four. So you'll see him cut to the outside a little bit in a second. But it looks like that win is tearing him apart. He does not look like he's in a good place. But he's getting off the bike right now, thankfully. Tries to make the tag up. Good burn. Hank, let me ask you something. In terms of pit location, who's got the best 
spot in terms of not having to deal with that wind as much? That depends on who you ask, honestly. <laughs> I am always a fan of wanting to get the best initial burn as possible to get that wheel off of me. And for that, I want to burn on the front stretch with that tailwind and have a pit on the back stretch by turn three, right where Delta Del Delta and Chi Alpha are. Yeah. The traditional sentiment is having a pit on the front stretch because there are more stands, more contending teams out there. But with this wind, I want to get the wheels off of me and be in that turn three pit. AK size making a bit of a burn here. We also haven't seen cutters prepping themselves for an exchange. They're not breaking themselves out of the pack too much. They're kind of boxed in right now. AK Sai making an exchange. That'll be Dylan Bouchelle coming on the bike. Peter Schultz, former Indiana football offensive lineman coming off of it. Tom's going to maybe want to try and break himself out. And it looks like Sigma Phi Epsilon has caught back up to the pack. They, they are have. back in it. Now they used a heck of a lot of energy getting back up there, but kudos to Drew Gavet for getting in in a tough situation. The first set of his little 500 over a, almost a half lap down, getting back up solo in the pack, safe. 22 bikes are on the lead lap as of right now. That's a humongous lead lap. Nearing in on 50 laps in the race here today on lap 44 as things stand. Making a bit of a burn, not being marked as Fisai. And actually, they're going to do another one. This is the second time now, Hank, that they're doing this fake one extra lap burn. And this is something to test the field on if they are really marking them or not. We saw last year they were marking them like a hawk because they had an Andrew Laval on that team. This year, they don't, and the field is letting them have that space, and that might be a little bit of a precursor to later in the race when they might go for it. We'll see. They're, they've got a strong lead as well. CSF's likely in a good spot as well. They were the lap leaders last time out. They're going to make an exchange this time, though, for sure, Fi. So they're only going to do one lap here. It looks like Kai Fi and CSF are hanging out there in front. They are behind right now. Well, CSF's way out in front. CSF is on the lead lap right now. Not even. They've got their own little island going off and entering into turn two right now. Completely unmarked. And they are not exchanging, it doesn't look like. If nothing else, they are getting a heck of a lot of face time. Yeah. Getting their team name out there, Christian Student Fellowship, up on Eagleson Avenue or David Baker Avenue, good for them to be up front with a great early race move. We'll see what how it turns out. Yeah, it is CSF. They're using a bit of a draft on Kai-Fi back there. That's going to be see the blue and orange flag coming out here. On the bike right now, Steven Song. Song was on NEH last year. Nick's English Hut, the only team that didn't qualify. Steven Song was on that group. He's getting a chance to race in his first little 500, a second time in the process, but he's way out in front. Absolutely proud of him from coming back from last year, not qualifying, qualifying in 34th, coming back with CSF, riding in his race, getting this experience. And they're way out in front. CSF is still up there. And if not, again, if nothing else, they are in a safe position. Looks like they might be prepping for an exchange, but I, it look, looks like they are going to do an exchange like here no in just a moment. No risk of a crash. They're by themselves. He's yep. not even pedaling that hard. This is a great little move by CSF. Cutter, Cutter's making exchanges while getting back on the bike. Is Jacob Kuhn, their leader, getting back, or their, their first biker, I should say, getting back on the bike for the second time. Well, one interesting, interesting thing about the Cutter's exchanges so far is their burns have not been that yeah. great. I don't even know if they, if Judah really did burn there. ASIG burn as well. They're trying to come back up into the front. And here comes Alpha Sigma 5. We can show them coming around turn three right behind Phi Gamma Delta in those orange jerseys. Fiji with a massive burn in front of this pack. Great job from them. Yeah, Fiji and ASIG both making exchanges here. Coming on the bike. Fiji, Fiji. to Max Raynor. He is have, he's going to have a much easier time getting, it, getting back in the pack than other riders in this field. And Beta Sigma Psi now going up in front. But Fiji looks like they're trying to hook on to Beta Sig's wheel, and they might be making a move here with Beta Sig. Beta Sig is making an exchange in this near side. But Max Rayner and Fiji, a fresh rider, yeah. if he can keep out in front. Again, they tried this in 2021 early in the race. They made a lap 50 attack, tried to lap the field, came back. Again, later in the race in 2021, tried to... Do it solo, came back. This is a team that likes to go long. Yeah, Rayner looks over his shoulder, looking back at the lead pack. He's letting them come back in after a bit of a straightaway lead. A smart decision. 
not a fun decision, but a smart decision from Fiji. Well, we mentioned Peter Schultz of AK Psy, a former football player for this football team. Let's talk now to the head football coach at Indiana. He's with Evan Kamikow. Thanks, Jack. Here with a very special guest, Tom Allen, Indiana head football coach. Coach, how special is it to be here today? A lot of fun. Just a great organization here, all these different groups, and what a great tradition. Love to be a part of it. Awesome day. And you got some more meaning in this. One of your former players, Peter Schultz, is riding for Alpha Kappa Psi. How proud of him are you right now? So proud. You know, it's the first time since I've been here we've had a player in the, in the race, and uh, he's trained so hard. He's lost 40 pounds since the season to get in great shape, but he's just tough, and I, I love him. And I want to ask you about the similarities between football and cycling. What comparisons can you make? Why would football background be so good for Peter right now in this race? Well, there's the mental toughness piece. You know, that's a huge part. The teamwork, you know, all the training that goes into it. And it's just realizing that uh, you're one of four guys out there. You're relying on those other men to, to, to do their job. And it's a, it's a team game. So that's what it's all about. So it's really cool. Do we think we could potentially see you on a bike at some point in your future? You know, I love to ride. So you never know. It may happen. Awesome. Well, the last question I'm going to ask, and then we'll let you go, is this atmosphere is so incredible. Why do you think that the students are going to be just like this at Memorial Stadium come this fall for football season? Well, you know, we got an awesome group of guys, and uh, we're just going to keep on battling. And, and we got some uh, new faces, for sure, but uh, uh, the work ethic is tremendous. Uh, these guys have come together, and uh, we're going to have a, a really good football team. And so I believe in that, and our kids believe in that, and we just need the support because it matters. A loud and proud and, and, and maybe, uh, you know, impacts the game, you know. And so the third down emphasis, you know, and being able to uh, – the team not be able to hear the – the signals and those different things that made an impact. So I just appreciate the support, and, and they've been awesome to us, and I just want them to come out, support us, and cheer on the Hoosiers. Well, Coach, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your race day and cheering on Peter. Can we get one LEO for the fans? Yes, LEO on three. LEO, baby. Awesome. Jack, back to you. Appreciate it, Evan. Good to see head coach Tom Allen supporting his guys. A lot of big things to watch out for. We see a SIGAP exchange right here. Kai Alpha pulling off on the front, trying to make a big burn. Cutters had a brief moment where they were pulling at the front, but it's Kai Alpha currently who are making an exchange in the back stretch. Delta Tau Delta also made one. And there's a, a big huge. crash in wow. turn two. 10, 12, 15 riders down. It is massive. Wow. Faisai is down. Ghost is down. Faisai McCap is down. Chinsano turn two. Down. Turn two again is As a massive that, thing. They hit that headwind coming from the west. Alpha Sigma Phi's down. They are still down. I don't know if they have the bike on the track right now. They don't look like they're running a bike over. No. This down. is awful strategy right now. They're still running a bike over. They're about to be lapped in a second. Alpha Sigma Phi sprinting through the infield, making that tag. Their rider is down. Grayson Welsh is the guy who was on and the bike. And here comes for ASIG. ASIG back onto the bike, but they're going to be, they're still not on the bike. They're getting passed by the pack. A lap down. Their race is coming into shambles right now. Yellow flag. It's a yellow flag. We'll take a breather here, try and reset things, but it's a yellow flag right now. Things will not move forward because it was ASIG was definitely the team that had by far the toughest time of it in that far corner. I mean, we saw guys go down and then a flip almost over the top of it. A really dangerous situation in that turn two for a second time. For the first time, it hit almost into the boards against where the fans sit. This time round, it was almost on the inside about... Uh, we'll get you the exact numbers on how many teams went down there, but it was Fisai. A lot of teams going down. Fisai, a good almost like, three quarters of a lap behind things. Man, we got some some tough scenes out here, but the flag is still yellow. Teams not expected to move too far forward in comparison to the leader. So right now, the major teams that went down are Phi Kappa Psi. They are about a half lap down. And then Alpha Sigma Phi, they had to race a bike and a rider over across the track. They are over a lap down yeah. from the field right now. And in terms of what the yellow flag means, it means that teams cannot advance further in, in comparison to the leader. They cannot advance themselves closer than they were when the yellow flag went. Yes, yeah, so this pack does not bunch up at all. They have to stay right where they were when that yellow flag hit in comparison to the leader. So right now, that leader on the track, I believe, is Kai Alpha. It is indeed. That, that white and blue team just in front of the pack. But you see Phi Kappa Psi a half lap back and Alpha Sigma Phi over a lap back. They cannot catch up. They have to make this junction by themselves or find a rider around them to make it work. And Alpha Sigma Phi with Connor Barry, yeah, their star rider hard. on the bike, he is going to make a huge effort not, ju not to just get back to the pack to get one lap down, but to, but to make another lap up to get back on terms with the leaders. 
So it looks like they're still cleaning up this mess over in turn two. Faisai is still on the lead lap. They're not terribly far behind. CSF as well. CSF, I guess, was involved in that crash as well. They were a team who had a, a lead for a good chunk of time there. We still are on yellow, waiting ourselves to see when we're going to move back to green. I think we're seeing maybe a, yep, we're back on green. here goes the green flag. All right, we are back. Sigma Phi Epsilon just pulling right ahead of everybody, wanting to push this. They do not want A Sig or Phi Psi back in this race. A Sig, so they're a lap and change behind right now in terms of where they're at. Man, that was a tough one right there. You see the leaders right there Kai Alpha, Beta, Sigma Psi, Cutters, and Sigma, Sigma Phi Epsilon, and IUDM. And from 29th, they're in fifth right now. Now, we saw in 2021, Phi Kappa Psi, they had two early crashes and they got over a lap down just as a sig is right now they came back up on lap themselves and got a lap up on the field we'll see if a sig and connor barry can do this today as it looks like alpha sigma phi is about to catch up back to this pack to get one lap down yeah. phi kappa Psi still about a straightaway and a half down working with it looks like bears who are on the lead lap working with chinzano Chinzano was also involved in that first crash. I'm sure if they were involved in the second crash here and on the day. And 3PH is in that little chase pack, too. They're mm -hmm. trying to catch back up. But this pack right now... Not moving too crazy. ...is not moving at all. And I cannot fathom why that is when you have a team like Phi Kappa Psi in their history trying to catch back up. ASIG made a few... I mean, twice, though, I guess, to be the devil's advocate there, Hank. Twice, though, they made big burns, an extra lap burn, and no one tracked them. So they almost maybe are allowing them to get right back in towards the base of this group. Absolutely. And the team to watch the next 50 laps will be those gray jerseys of Alpha Sigma Phi to see if they can and how they can unlap themselves. Because I guarantee you there will be more of those burns plus ones, plus twos to try to get out in the field. It, it looks like right now, again, those top teams, Sig F and Cutters, are just looking at each other and not anybody else. Sigma Nu made an exchange. They were currently out front. They had a bit of a burn there. Fidel is also doing a burn here. They're being tracked by Fiji. Fiji's preparing for an exchange on this near side. Fidel on the far side. Fiji themselves. with a great race so far. Some great burns as Fidel just goes flying by yeah. everybody. On the bike is Quinn Peterson coming onto the bike for Fight Game Adult. is John Gudeman. Gudeman trying to get himself back into the group. Beta Sig passing them as does Sig Ep. Delta Tau Delta comes on the inside as well. On the far side, Fidel makes an exchange as well. We see that on the screen right now as they are trying to make themselves get back into the lead group. Also pulling out now in the front now is AK Psy. AK Psy, a quiet contender so far in this field. Again, only 60 laps scored, but they are up in the lead making that exchange. Garrett Cortez, he was the man on the bike for Alpha Sigma Psy. Tent says he's okay. Good news that he is okay. If we'll he, see if he races again, but that was tough. If he can be back on that bike, ASIC is not out of this. If he cannot race again today, it makes their life a lot, lot harder. AK Psy makes an exchange, pulling out on the front is Evan Scholars, I believe, again. Some very smart racing from Evan Scholars today. They are a team that we don't mention much in this nope. race, but qualifying 27. Two returning riders. They are on this lead lap. They've made good burns. Kudos to Evan Scholars for being in this race. A Sig is on the is with the lead pack, but they're a lap behind. They're not on the lead lap. You see them kind of about tenth or so on the outside. On the front pulling things is Sig Ep, preparing for an exchange as well. So right now, for these top teams, the Sig Eps, the Cutters, the Fijis, they are wanting to save their energy until something big happens. There was a lot of drama in that in those first 60 laps. They want to start slowing down, saving for the big moments later in the race. Dan Lin of CSF Cycling still under examination. The CSF was part of that big crash about five, 10 laps ago now at this point. Uh, exchange on the far side, you can see it with Nova Cycling. Now, the strongest of exchanges there. We're seeing a massive pull here on the front. And Burn. here comes Alpha Sigma Psi. They are not going to exchange. This is their first attempt at unlapping themselves. Let's see how far Connor Barry can go. Again, he made a big effort to just catch back up to the pack after the crash. And he, and he ran a half mile, or not a half mile, <laughs> a quarter mile across the field to even get that yeah. bike on the track. He might be going a few more laps. Again, they are still... A, not on the lead lap, but they're trying to unlap yeah. themselves. Let's go down now to Abby Heyman, who has more on the crash about 10 laps ago. 
That's right. Thanks, guys. We just saw a massive crash over here. 15 riders. We have Garrett Cortez from ASIG who injured his shoulder. He was carted off, taken to the examination tent, but he is okay. He is back in his pit. And then we also had Dan Lynn from CFS. It was his hip that appeared to be injured. He was also carted off and he is currently being examined in the medical tent. We will provide an update on him as soon as possible. This is all coming in at the turn two because of this wind coming this way. It's also starting to drizzle. It's just providing a very rough environment over there in turn two. So hopefully we don't see too much else from over there, but that's where it's gonna be if there is. Back up to you guys. Yeah, big crash down oh, in 32. Thank you, Abby, for that. We ought to crash again in turn two right after she says it in turn or I pit 32 I should say and that looked like a bunch of exchanges coming in at the same time while the packs going across it looked like Novus is involved may CSF might have been involved in that but again turn two with that wind coming oh, in from the west and she mentions the drizzle too we can't feel it up here in the press box but man and ASIG is still about a half a straightaway up about 50 or 60 meters in front of this pack trying to unlap themselves but Chinzano burning cutters right behind them IUDM still up there on the lead lap Kyle right behind them this pack is pushing and it does not look like ASIC is getting any room as they make nope. an exchange and they're about to be a lap down again as the pack comes up and chases them they're getting on the bike Carson Heath it was good news though from Abby they got Cortez back in the pit if they can get keep him around the number 10 ITT placer you got a pair of top 10 guys. They were a team we pegged as a potential team that could surprise some folks. Interesting to see what happens moving forward. Cutters were the lead team after that last lap. 65 laps under our belt. We've had two huge crashes, about a 7-8 team crash, a 15 team crash. We've had a few uh, pit crashes. A bit of a messy race, especially with these 30 mile an hour gusts that can hit you in your face as you're coming into turn two. Still 19 teams on the lead lap, so it's been a, a bit of a slow race in that sense. It's Sigep, Cutters, and Fisai. Fisai are back in things. They've gotten themselves right back into it. Carson Etnire is on the bike for them. Going on the outside, trying to make a bit of a, a move forward as Lambda Kayaf, the first time saying their name. They Jack, are in the lead Jack, lap. you mentioned these winds coming out from the west. What happens is when the wind hits the front of the peloton, the lead riders that are pushing get hit with that wind and all slow down and you have this accordion effect throughout the pack where it widens out, gets bunched up because those riders in the back, they don't feel it. They keep going and that's when a rub of wheels can happen and crashes occur as we see bears coming out with a burn right now. Yeah, bears making a massive burn right there. They are currently leading things. They're pushing themselves, trying to make an exchange in the back stretch. Let's give you a field reset, a bit of a length through one at this time. Kai Phi, Phi Sigma Kappa, Tau Epsilon Phi, Wild Aces, Army, Alpha Kappa Lambda, Human Wheels, Pi Kappa Alpha, Beta Theta Pi, Delta Sigma Pi are the bottom 10 teams. A lot of them victim of some crashes. Grey Goat was in that first crash earlier in the race. Chinzano, Alpha Sigma Phi, 3PH, CSF Cycling, Novus Cycling, Lambda Chi Alpha, Evan Scholars, Sigma Nu and Forest Cycling, Ghost Cycling, Alpha Kappa Psi, and Beta Sigma Psi in 11th. And now give your top 10 Sigma Alpha Epsilon, Phi Delta Theta in a good spot, Cutters in 8th place, IUDM, Phi Gamma Delta. A lot of changes here on the board. Let's give you top 5 Delta Tau Delta, Cutters, Phi Kappa Psi, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, Sigma Phi Epsilon are your 1 through 5 in that order. Making a burnout in the front is Delta Tau Delta, preparing for an exchange in the back stretch, chasing them down is Cutters as well as Phi Kappa Psi, Sigma, uh, Sigma uh, Phi Epsilon, excuse me, and SAE in behind them, Chi Alpha, and then Phi Delta, Fiji behind them as well. Cutters gearing up for an exchange right now without a gap as Phi Psi and Sigma keep cutters exchange it as well. pushing. Judah Thompson back on the bike yep. for them. Again, a great freshman rider, but they're putting him in, in tough situations early as Phi Psi and Sig Ep up. Big on the pack. Hey. Faisai looking to exchange on this next lap. Sig up, not a rider in the pit yet. SAE also made an exchange, and they're also trying to catch themselves back up. But this is interesting for Sig up if they can try and make a big push here. 
if I'm sig up right now after that crash and big effort by Drew Gavette, I sit up, I make this exchange coming up and try to rest because again, it's a long race and they have already used a lot of energy. Looks like Will Pitt's giving the tongue out signal to the pit that he's going to exchange ne next lap. Again, with a huge gap on the field, he can just kind of coast around for an exchange next lap and still put his next rider in good position. Caleb Cooper on for Carson Ettenire. They're the second team in second place as SIGAP makes a huge burn. They've got a near entire straight lead on things. Pitts is on the bike. And a good exchange, exchange from CSF. Again, they are they were involved in that crash earlier. They're trying to catch back up. Here is Pitts coming in for Alex Hamilton. He's the man trying to come on the bike, their sophomore rookie. Decently clean exchange. He's on the bike. AKSI also making an exchange. Just look at how safely and softly he can come back into this pack. How does he say this? He's making a move nope. right now, isn't he? Yeah, he's pushing he, off on the front. He does not want to come into that pack. That head is going down, and that means he is hurting. Ooh. He's making a move. Jack, we've got ourselves a little race on our hands. Yeah, we do indeed. He's got himself a half straightaway edge. Sigap making a bit of a move right here. They've Forget got them a lot of what daylight. I said about sitting in. They are using Alex Hamilton as the man with a gap to go hard. I would say for another four or five laps. And just as I say that the pit is telling him to soften up and oh. slow down, but it doesn't look like he is. I saw that the pit and the coaches were giving him the hands down, slow down signal. Am, by I, am I overthinking this? That they're trying to see other teams see him do that because he's his head is down. He is not going slow. He is in that pain cave. I would give him another two to three laps max on this bike before they go to a rider like Drew Gavette or maybe Max Martin to extend this lead. This is a move, Kai Jack. Alpha this exchange. is happening. Kai Alpha make an exchange to the number two team and Delts. So I'm going to Cutters and, Fi and Fiji up in the lead group. Cutters sliding in a little bit. And so far, the pack has not really realized what they're doing. And they're, they're prepping an exchange. Man, this is totally moved from Zigap. Yeah, it looks like Mac Max Martin's coming on next, but you have Cutters five back. You have Delts not pulling. You have Fiji and Fisai trying to pick up the pace, but those are not the teams that need to be doing this. Cutters and Delts will need to be up near the front to catch this move. 11 With second gap currently. An 11 second gap, as Jack said. This move is not coming down any time. And it looks like, is he doing another lap? No, they want a bike exchange. He's not going to get it off He's in doing time. one more lap. Yeah. He wants to come out, but he can't because there's oh. no bike yet there. That's the second time now that they've been a little slow with getting the bike across the track and they haven't been able to get it to go. We have seen over the past couple of days in the women's race some faulty exchanges, bad strategy, and today in the men's race, again, this rider wants to come out. You can see his butt. Look at his arm straight out like an arrow. His head is dropping down every couple pedal strokes. He wants to come out as soon as possible. 14 second lead. That's an and more than a straightaway right now for Sigat. This is a huge moment for them at lap 75. But hey, you mentioned it. I asked at 25. They got 125 laps, so they're going to be suffering if they decide to go with this train of thinking. And Chinzano almost getting in a little bit of an awkward situation there, but it's going to be an exchange coming onto the bicycle as Max Martin. Alex Hamilton coming off of it after, after a very strong, strong showing. Right now, the pack is letting them dangle a little bit, which I honestly, I think is a great strategy because they only, they not only, chasing him down? They only have about a straightaway gap, maybe a tad bit more. Right now, you have 124 Man, laps he's to go going hard. in this race. At this point, you need to get the lap up on the field or you need to get back in the pack because it is a windy race, just as Teeter did yesterday. You are out there suffering, burning your matches one by one while these teams in the pack can rest up. Max Martin is not sitting up. He's trying to go for it, but if they need to go, they need to go now. And Brian Gavette, the coach for SIGAP, is giving him that finger four and say, go as fast as you can. Man, they got their pair of rookies making some big moves here. They're sit they had Pitts come off. For Hamilton, he brought it on Martin. Uh, Here comes Fiji, exchange. Fiji making an exchange. Let's see if Ooh. they can get back in the pack. Outgoing rider goes down. That doesn't matter because the rider on the track is on the bike, back yeah. in the pack. Yeah, Gudeman left it all out there. He was exhausted getting up off of that one. A big set for him. Cutters and Judah Thompson starting to push. And that pack, as you see, is getting single filed, splitting up. There are many gaps forming. And if you are not on the right side of the gap, that is your race going away in front of you like that. They're a half lap behind Sig Sigfi. And Sigma Phi Epsilon now with about a, a, right, make another a half lap ahead. And this is is this Drew Gavette coming on next it to Sigup? So dangerous times. 
Sig Ep might be trying to complete this lap, and guess who's after Drew Gavet? Will Pitts, the, <laughs> the, one of the top sprinters in the race. So if they can go to Drew Gavet, have him do five to seven laps of hard, hard racing, and then Will Pitts at the end, right now the pack is pushing, but they're not pushing that hard. Sig Ep was still less than a half lap now because of that exchange, but that gap is going to come up very quickly. Here is Drew Gavet, senior in his third race. There's only 16 guys in the field who have their third or on their third race. Only four guys are juniors doing that. Will Pitts is the one of those guys who could have gone back next year to do that. 18 second gap as things stand. Do we hear that from Jeremy Gray as too? As we just see Alpha Sigma Phi still over a lap down there, getting pushed out of the pack. It looks like their race is it's tough. falling away in front of them. I feel for them. They came in as really a dark horse winning pick and a podium contender pick but with a bad crash like that on the entire other side of the track from their pit box this race is about luck sometimes and luck has not gone their way so far sig up they're making a big bold move here there as the lead lap beyond them behind them goes past the start finish line they are just just under a half lap ahead as beta sigma psi kai alpha and delta Del delta are pushing this pack again I appreciate that Jude Thompson has put a lot of effort into this race, but this pack needs some more help. Judah Thompson can only do so much, and this pack is not going as fast as they need to as this gap goes back up to a half a lap. It's going to be a case of how, how long can you allow them to have this before you say, all right, maybe they actually can complete this race. Hey. If, if the pack can keep this gap consistent at a half a lap and not much more, you can leave them hanging for the entire race. That's what happened yesterday with Teeter in that after about 30, 40 laps, that gap start, stopped going up and stayed consistent. And you were just letting Sega burn up their matches one by one. We still have 120 laps <laughs> left in this race. Again, if Sega wants to do this, they need to get the lap or get back in this pack. They are making a potential race winning or race losing move right now. Yeah. But as I say that, they Brian, were getting over a, over a half lap up on the field. Yeah, Brian Gavette was pointing at him aggressively, saying chase down the guys in front of him. And those guys in front of him have been lapped, and they're trying to lap him again. This pack is going to go to DEFCON 1 in a second and need to chase them, chase Sigup down as soon as possible. And you're about to see this pack split yeah. up and that rubber band break. Yeah. It's Judah Thompson pulling in the very front of this chasing pack. And behind him is Kai Alpha, and there's an and exchange prepping. It looks like prepping for Drew Gavette is coming into William Pitts, their star rider. If anybody's going to close this gap down, it's going to be Will Pitts. Sigap is known for making these long moves. Back in 2016, they tried it. They tried this almost every few years. I'm excited that they're trying it again. Will it work? Who knows? But it's, it makes for an exciting race, that's for sure. Do you remember the manner in which they won in 2015? Was it similar to this or was it different? Not at all. 2015, they stayed in the pack and did not do anything. They actually crashed early on and nobody really mentioned them. They did not pull. They didn't push. They stayed in that pack and then Nick Torrance came out from nowhere and won the sprint. You saw a bit of a tough exchange for SAE down in the near side and they're almost being lapped. They're being chased down by the team ahead of them by one spot in the quals. Wow, but SAE is pushing some tempo to try and get back into that lead lap or lead pack, chasing pack, I should say. It's still on the lead lap. Sigap over a half lap on the field now. Man, SAE though is struggling to catch back up to that chase pack. 21 second lead. That's big. That's just past half a lap at the current pace that we are going at. But again, with this wind, it's so hard Brutal. to do this by themselves. We are up here in this press box, and the wind <laughs> is gusting left and right. And I got to tell you, Sig Ep has no one to help them out right now. Delta's how Delta's prepping for an exchange in the back stretch. They're going to go for one more lap. Maybe they may even try and pull a bit of a burn here to try and get some time back. It'll, and it looks like Judah Thompson is starting to push this pack. They may be making an exchange soon, or... Yeah, he is hurting right now. Hand is off the bike, tongue going out. He wants to come out as Delta Del Delta goes right around them. Yeah, that's John oh, Peterson. Oh, and Chinzano with a bad exchange. And, they, and their race goes from bad to worse right now. Man. Man. And Delta Del Delta in the back stretch going for a burn. Faisai leading up for an exchange. Cutter's getting a bike in the pit box leading up for an exchange. Judah Thompson is hurting yeah, right now. Delta, Delta Delta just exchanged and they're, they'll catch back up to the chase pack. 
but Torin Cray Mayor, their sprinter, they do not want to use him right now. They want to save him for the end of the race, but they cannot. Last year, wasn't it 170, 185? They burned him a little bit, or was it 21 when we saw Cray Mayor get a little bit overutilized earlier in the race, trying to catch back up with things? Absolutely. We see five side make exchange too. This pack is blown to smithereens. We have in this, so Sig F is still lone in the lead right now. They are almost a straightaway half behind the chase pack. In that chase pack, we have Phi Gamma Delta in the orange jerseys, Phi Delta Theta in the yellow jerseys, Bears, IUDM still up there, Cutters up there, Chi Alpha up there. Look at Torin go on on the outside. It's but the second time on the bike. He had nine laps the first time. He knows what to do. He is riding everybody off of his wheels right now. Eli Konow and Fidel cannot follow him. He's yelling inside of those lapped riders. Yeah. He needs to catch Will Pitts right now. <laughs> this is the number th number four ITT placer against the number five ITT placer in a battle of wits. But it's Pitts preparing to come out of the race. Another exchange here, similar to what T was doing yesterday frequent exchanges it's Alex Hamilton coming onto the bike I don't know about these short sets Jack I don't know about them because every time you exchange you lose about seven to eight seconds they are still alone in that win look at Torn you see Torn Cray Mayor in the pack trying to catch back up about a half lap down on Sig App but again Sig App is blowing their matches right now you start the race with a matchbox with a limited number of matches and each time you use your energy you burn a match you burn a match and right now Sig F is burning their matches like no other team in the field. A Fiji exchange as well on the near side. Man. Again, if the if the field can keep this lead to a half lap, Sig F will fall away and be gassed by the end of this race. We're seeing as High Alpha and Delta Tau Delta and Bears, IUDM all filling in right behind Torn Cray May War. And SAE, we just saw their pit with a look of despair. They're still trying to catch up to that chase pack from the bad exchange. Fiji getting dropped off right now. AK Psy getting dropped off. Ghost getting dropped. Beta Sig is behind this chase pack. These are top teams that we looked at coming into this race getting dropped at lap 88. You can see in the chase pack, Cray May War is pushing guys in front of him. He wants to rest. He's saying this chase pack, he's done leading that group. They're prepping for another exchange is Sig, Sig App. They're wanting a bike across. They're readying a the, ready the guy for a bike to bike exchange. I think this is. I don't know. I Coming don't back know. On the bike is I Max don't know Martin. what to do for them right now. They're over a lap, a half lap up, but they're just burning matches left and right. We'll see if they can hold out. Now, two teams in that chase pack right now holding their own is IU Dance Marathon and Lucas Troutman. Big kudos to him. And then Bears qualifying 30th this year. Yeah. They made the podium, came in second in 2019, but qualifying 30th, great for them. Only team with three riders registered interesting to see how they can handle things long term and sig Eb just made an exchange still alone up front they're trying so hard to make this work they've been up front for about almost 20 laps now jack yeah. so that's sig Eb up front they're currently edging things cutters chi alpha delta tau delta phi delta theta the teams that follow of that top five three of them qualified out to the top ten and SAE has just caught back onto that chase pack. They are back in the mix, so don't write them off just yet. It's on the bike currently for SIG App is Max Martin. God, they are going for some short, short. This is not sustainable, changes. Jack. This is not a sustainable strategy. If it works, kudos to them, but. When do you bail out? Are they committed at this point? Oh, they're committed right now. They're a straightaway and a half behind. This is their race. They knew what they were doing coming into this race. They want to make the move. But it looks like the pack is working together, but they're not gaining any ground on them. Yeah. And right now, Sig Epps just about to pass some lapped riders. They're about to lap Phi Kappa exchange. Psi right now. They're making another exchange. And Phi no, Kappa Psi is making Sig exchange. Is they pushed him out. Keeping going another lap. Phi Kappa Psi is a lap down now, yeah. Jack. They are a lap down and in some big, big trouble. Carson Nett and I are on the bike now. Arguably the best rider, number 14. Talked to him before the race. His sister, Lauren, won yesterday with Melanzana. He may hope that... He got a similar bit of fortune. Melanzana was behind a good distance behind Teeter. Eventually came back after they burned themselves out. This is exactly what we talked about pre-race, Jack. These two teams in Cutters and Sigup, they knew they were the deepest teams coming into this race. They do not want to leave it to a bunch sprint. They say, we're deep. We're going to use our depth and go strong as Sigup comes in for another exchange to Drugovet again. They are making fast exchanges left and right here. Wow. 
Faisai got the lap back just to buy a bit back on that lead lap. But man, we're seeing, you can see the Sigat mechanic. We're just switching bikes. Just it's been a it's been a, a, cur a, a consistent process. Just they knew the bikes exactly out. what they were doing coming into this race, and their plan so far has played out perfectly. But again, my worry is it's only a half lap gap. You have a strong pack with Cutters, Delts, Chi Alpha, Fidel, IUDM, SAE, Bears, Fiji, all up there working together to chase one team in Sigma Phi Epsilon. Hank, I, we need to take deep breath, or we're gonna have a heart attack. There's not even we're not even halfway through the race. There's still an entire half of this race still to come. What it race has been so far. We're just past the hour mark, an hour and three minutes so far on the race. But it's been Sig App who have been the dominant storyline. Two crashes early on. And then on 53, we had a yellow flag. And we see in the back, it's Faisai. And they're allow. I don't know, is that an Sig allowing drafting situation Sig back there? App. So Faisai is so desperate right now that they are pulling Sig up along. That's not a good idea. I don't understand this at and all. That's Carson Etnire. Carson Etnire, a an experienced rider, a strong racer. He is just pulling along Drew Gavette. And he finally pulls off and says, Drew, you come through. You're in the lead. We're a lap down. But Faisai is allowing him. Sig up to use their wheel. 15 mile an hour winds picking up here in Bloomington. And you can see this camera panning around the track. This pack is shattered. You have 33 riders at every place in the track. As Delta Del Delta goes for an exchange with cutters right on their wheel. Yeah, we see that looks like it's Torin trying to keep him up there. And we're still seeing it's in an entire lap that Faisai has allowed Drew Gavette to just kind of fall behind. Does, does Carson Etnire know? I think he knows. Carson's soft pedaling right now. I think Drew knows and the team knows. We aren't going to get this lap right now. We're just burning energy. So let's save ourselves. We can stay a half lap up right now and use these this lap traffic to get a draft, refresh ourselves, and then go again in a little bit. As cutters, it looks like they're about to make an exchange as well. It looks like Gaskell might be coming back on the bike for them. They're getting their second bike ready. A lot of bike-to-bike -bike exchanges. Is that a difference because of the bikes change back now to state? Or is it just a, a general, more consistent thing in Little 5? This is more consistent in Little 500, especially in the past decade or two. It's a safer exchange. You lose a couple seconds that way. But especially if you have two riders with differing heights and inseam lengths, you want to use that different bike because even if you're losing two seconds at first, you get that back in spades as, the, as their set goes on. On the bike right now for Fight Delta Theta, Drew Rising. He's drafting in behind Torin Cray Maywar. Torin Cray Mayor, you can see this look of pain on <laughs> his face. He does not want to pull anymore. He wanted to exchange out a couple laps ago. There wasn't a bike ready, and Peyton Gaskell sitting there waiting for him. But this pack is pushing up. Torin is hurting right now, yeah, Jack. He, he's allowing Delta Tau Delta and Kai Alpha to get in front of him. That's a strung out chasing pack trying to get back on Fight Delta Theta. They've got a strung out pack of their own following them. And we see SAE just got dropped from that pack. I think IUDM got dropped from that pack. This pack is whittling down as SIGEP still just plows along. They're, they're about two thirds of a lap up, keeping that gap consistent. For Torn, this is his 12th lap now. When are you trying to get him off the bike for cutters? As soon as possible, soon honestly. Possible. It look, I want him to have a gap on the pack when he exchanges. This is turning into a late race situation where you do want you do not want to give any team any kind of gap because if you leave that gap, you're not getting back on there. So right now, Torin realizes that gap isn't there. Let's just stay in the pack, suck on some wheels for a little bit, and live to fight another day once the pack slows down and I can get out and have Peyton get in, get in the pack without much problem. We'll take a breather, Hank. Down on track side, Abby Heyman is with the winners from yesterday's race, Melanzana. That's right, thanks, Jack. I am here with the 2023 Little 500 Women's Champions. Guys, how does it feel? Put the excitement into words for me. I mean, honestly, it feels like unreal. Like, what, what an amazing day we had yesterday. How are you guys feeling over here? Amazing. It's crazy to think that this is how we're ending our senior year. Yeah. So it's such a good note to go on. Like Lauren was a rookie. Abby raced last year, so got to two feet. And then I couldn't race last year. So it's just like an amazing note for all of us to end on. Abby, how does it feel to win two years in a row? Like, what does that feel like? I don't know. I just feel like I got really lucky. Maybe in like a past life. I don't know what happened. <laughs> like Little Five is such an amazing community and experience. 
even if you never get a chance to win because so many things have to align and I just like things have to work out in your favor on that one day and I am just like so grateful that I got to do it um, with like my best friends so yeah. that's awesome Lauren we are here watching the men's little 500 yeah. race right now and your twin brother Carson is on by side how does it feel getting to watch him today after your victory yesterday I mean it's awesome he's like the main reason I'm out here like I've watched him train so hard the last three years and it's been so inspiring so like I'm so excited to watch him and like he's the best and I hope that his hard work pays off. All right, well thank you guys so much. Congratulations again. I hope you get to celebrate this week and next week. Thanks again. Back up to you guys. Some great stuff, Abby, from back to back champions, Melanzana, 2022 and 2023. Hope they are enjoying their festivities here today. We've seen a lot of stuff happen during that interview. Sigap twice now Gavette has waved off exchanges that were offered to him we still sit in the pit it looks to be is Will Pitts Drew is an incredibly smart rider you can see he is still working with Phi Kappa Psi and that wheels there why ruin it you have a good rider to work with and now it looks like he's going to go in for that exchange yeah. but he was he was drafting off of Carson Etnar who is a strong rider as we just mentioned why ruin that go out for another couple laps and allow Pitts Will Pitts come on the bike and catch back up to Carson. It is Will Pitts on the bike. Now there's 10 teams on the lead lap, but they're all currently chasing that man in front. You can see him all by himself heading to turn two. Turn two's been perilous so far today. Two big crashes. But as the pack dwindles down as it has, the crashes become less common. And right now, this chase pack, Phi Delta Theta in those yellow jerseys, Number two, is Thomas going Rising. for another exchange. You have Delta 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 cut his Kyle from behind, but that pack is shattered. We've seen with Delta, with, with Phi Delta Theta, they're doing a great, great job. And it looks like now the gap has come below a half a lap now. Yep. For the first time in quite some time, it's just below a half a lap. But that chase pack is down to three teams and three teams only. And Delta Tau Delta, Cutters, Chi Alpha, and Jack, this bodes incredibly well for Sigma, Sigma Phi Epsilon. This is what they wanted to do. Not a lot they, of don't, teams. they don't want a big pack of 10 riders chasing them. They want singular teams and riders chasing them because guess what? They're facing the same win they are, but right now Sig Epsilon's a half lap up. Sigma Phi Epsilon has led for the last 45 laps. They've been eating win for 45 laps. They have their best sprinter on the bike right now in Will Pitts. There is nobody sprinting today, let me tell you that. Everybody's giving their all right now. We're only halfway through this race. This has been one of the fastest races in recent memory in Little 500. It has been hot from start to finish. Sigma Phi Epsilon causing this explosion about 30 or 35 laps ago, still out solo in the lead, being chased by a pack of about three riders, now four with Phi Delta Theta catching back up, but Fiji dropped off. ASIG is over a lap down. Human Wheels is down. Grey Goat crashed earlier. Kai Fi, I'll give you a lap reset. Kai Fi is dead last in 33. Phi Sigma Kappa, Army, Tau Epsilon Phi, Wild Aces, Alpha Kappa Lambda, Human Wheels, Pi Kappa Alpha, Beta Theta Pi, and Delta Sigma Pi make up the bottom 10 teams. Let's give you the next 10. CSF Cycling, they were up front for a while, got caught in that crash. Chinzano, Lambda Chi Alpha, Novus, Evan Scholars, Grey Goat, Sigma Nu, Alpha Sigma Pi. Go ahead, Hank, sorry. Just as you say that, Beta Sigma Psi, one of the dark horse contenders for this for this race, is being lapped by Sigma Phi Epsilon. Wow, man, that's crazy. We have, we have the top half there. Let's get in the 15th place now is 3PH, 4th Cycling, Alpha Kappa Psi, Ghost Cycling, IUDM up 18 spots from their qual position. Beta Sigma Psi is in 10th. They have been lapped, though. A Sigma Alpha Epsilon, Phi Kappa Psi, Bears, Phi Gamma Delta, Phi Delta Theta, Delta Tau Delta, Chi Alpha, Cutters, and Sigma Phi Epsilon, who have led for now 47 laps and counting. It's been a remarkable lead for them. They are, I mean, what are they pushing on? Just about half a lap lead as things stand. This half lap lead has been consistent. Again, I'm a little bit worried, not too worried anymore, but I'm a little bit worried if this lap, if this gap stays consistent, they are burning their matches for later in the race, but with only three Real contenders, maybe four with Fidel in that chase pack. Every team is using their matches right now. They're using their energy, and all those teams that wanted to sprint, they're off the back right now chasing. If you're cutters right now, let's talk about the chasing group right here. If you're one of these teams that you can see on your screen right now, what is your strategy to try and get back into this race? Work with the teams around you. 
Right now, the teams around them on the lead lap are Cutters, Chi Alpha, Delta Tau Delta, and Phi Delta Theta. There are a couple lap teams in there that could help you, but again, there's a reason they're lapped. They're a little bit weaker. They're hurting already. They won't be able to help you push back to Sigma Phi Epsilon that you need to work together, and that's what they're doing right now. Sigma Phi Epsilon is prepping themselves for an exchange. Actually, excuse me, they just blew through it right there. They're deciding to stay right there. Now, if Sigma Phi Epsilon, there's a chase pack of about 10 to 12 riders, left riders ahead of them. If they can catch back onto that pack, they can have a little bit of a rest there and draft and have another little reset before they keep trying again and just keep that gap consistent. Uh, Fiji's pulling a small group here. 3PH with a good exchange over in turn four, as, Chin as we see Chinzano with another exchange. Sig up though, coming in with an exchange. Good tag, here comes Alex Hamilton. Good jump on the bike, hands and the drops out of the saddle. Get back to the inside around Chinzano. That is how you do it in the Little 500. You mentioned the exchange for 3PH, Max was like T-Winkle getting on the bike for them. Just passed halfway through this race. That gap now about a straightaway and three quarters, a little bit down, but that's after an exchange again. You lose about seven to nine seconds on each exchange. But as you see from Alex Hamilton, he is pushing it back in front. Great, so a little point here, great strategy by Chinzano. They're a couple laps down now, but they're just hanging onto that wheel of the leaders in Sigma, Sigma Phi Epsilon. That's free speed they're getting over yep. the entire field. They're not fighting for the win anymore. They're just fighting for places. Yeah. And when you, you can just draft off of the leader who is going the fastest in the race, that is free places. Torn Cray Maywar comes off the bike in place for Peyton Gaskell. That was a long set for Cray Maywar. And Gaskell's on the bike now. They're trying to make an attempt to come back in here. Gaskill is very quickly coming in. Yeah, a two mile an hour drop, as we heard mentioned by our PA announcer, Jeremy Gray. Two miles an hour less for Sigma Phi Epsilon. But now that they've caught that chase pack, they can possibly... They ri they're, they're, they're riding through there. They are, they're just riding through. You're absolutely right. They don't want to draft off of anybody. They want to keep this lead going. Now the next riders up ahead for them that they can catch are Phi Kappa Psi and Fiji who are working together about yeah. a straightaway ahead of Sigma Phi Epsilon. And if they can catch up, those are that's free speed as well to catch back ahead. But it looks like Cutters now and Peyton Gaskill in that green jersey, oh, yeah. less than a half lap down, they are going solo up to Sigma Phi Epsilon. They have dropped Chi Alpha, they have dropped Delts, they have dropped Phi Delt and Peyton Gaskill is putting a big effort in to catch Sigma Phi Epsilon about a straightaway and a half down now. Gaskill has seen him down about 50 laps, been behind 50 laps, they said, fine, I'll do it myself. Gaskill's got it where it's less than half a lap. It was like that for quite some time. Cutters is making a huge move, now a straightaway down. Peyton Gaskill, his head down, he is in the pain cave coming around that back stretch the Sigma Phi Epsilon comes around turn four. No, but, it look, but it looks like Payne's gonna exchange. I don't know how I feel about that. You need, if you want to catch Sig up, you need to have longer sets because again, each exchange lasts about seven to eight seconds of time lost. Judah Tom's gonna come out of the bike. Here comes Judah again. This is their long lap eater. He is an endurance man. I would, I hope I see him in there for at least 10 laps to make a big gap up. He asserts the front position of this chase pack. He's ahead of Chi Alpha, he's ahead of Delta Tau Delta. Now Chi Alpha, good on them and Delta Tau Delta for catching back up to Cutters and they can use Judah's draft if they yep. can stay on his wheel to catch back up. This is the move to catch Sig up right now. The entire, entire of that three team chase group is now within half a lap making an exchange here come on the bike is max martin for this, alex hamilton jack this is the time to catch him judah can see them around turn one if he can keep the speed up you see him ducking his head down he glanced behind himself he's chugging along he's trying to catch up here less than a straightaway behind less than 100 meters behind now judah is not letting anybody else pull he says this is my race to catch sig up and i'm gonna get the glory from it Chi Alpha, Delts, they're just hanging on for dear life, it looks like. Sean Grimm on for Chi Alpha. On the bike for Chi Alpha right now. Left the wrestling team to join this group of guys. 
Seven teams on the lead lap as things stand. We've seen it drop off steadily, Hank. It used to be 22. Now it's down to seven. At usually at lap 115 in the race, we see about maybe 15 teams yep. to 20 teams on the, lead, on the lead lap. Seven teams at this point. It is a fast race. It is a windy race. I am thankful I'm up here in this box and not on the track because their legs are hurting. The SIGAP lead is down to seven seconds right now as they round turn three. Judah Thompson putting in a huge effort right now to catch them. But look at Delta Tau Delta and Kai Alpha just sitting on his wheel. Delta Tau Delta again was one of our dark horse, maybe podium contenders for this race. If they can get back up without using too much energy and keeping Josh Herps a little bit fresher than these other sprinters from Cutters and Sig App, they are a big contender to win the sprint later on in this race. It's been a fascinating race so far. But now Sigma, Phi, Sigma Alpha Epsilon is in those pink jerseys wow. is a lap behind Sig App, but Sig App is just using them as a draft. Again, we saw this with Fisai earlier, Jack, and now with SAE. SAE is just pulling along We've Sig seen App. Fiji and Fisai have both been kind of helping each other out in the chase. They both just made exchanges at the exact same time, but Fisai is tearing off. And we're seeing, I think the, the pit was yelling. They were indeed, they were yelling at SAE, make sure that you're not letting him pull at the front. We're seeing another exchange happen here. They may try and burn a little bit here, get an exchange going here. This is probably the moment when Delta Tau Delta cutters and Kai Alpha can try and really catch up. They're just under half a, about a straightaway behind them right now. Absolutely, as we see Fiji come around turn four, they're about a straightaway in front of Sig App, about to get lapped. Faisai has just gone ahead like a rocket. They are trying to catch up that chase pack about a half lap down. And there's a rider in that Sig Ep pit waiting for an exchange, but he keeps going. No exchange yet. This gap is coming down slowly but surely. Jack, I think we're going to have a four-team sprint here soon in this race. We'll get down to Evan then right now. Evan, what have you got for us? Thanks, Jack. A special treat in the stands with two of the rowdiest crowds here. I got Owen Van Hees of the Phi Psi president and Eli Anderson of Fiji. And guys, I want to start with you, Owen. What have such a big support here? I mean, the bikers put in so much work throughout the year. It's incredible to have the alumni and all the brotherhood for this event. It means the world. Eli, I'll ask you the same question. What's it mean to have this support here? I can't reiterate enough. Everybody here, all the bikers putting in Hundreds of hours of work, all the graduate alumni putting in lots of money, helping everything we can. These guys showing up, those guys showing up, it's a blast. And you guys, you might not be in that first pack, but you're right in the thick of it. What does it mean? How much more do you guys can do to support your teams? Uh, I mean, as long as we get the energy up in here, we know the bikers will take care of their part. Last year was a little bit disappointing, so we're hoping to have a different outcome this year. I didn't hear the question. <laughs> it's all good. How much more can you guys do to support your guys? Cheer as loud as we possibly can. As much as we possibly can. Let's They're right guys. behind us. They're right in front of us. That's all we can do. Any good plans for after the race? I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens after the race. It could be, you know, some celebratory or, you know, some, another way around. We'll, start, we'll find out. And for you, after the race. Enjoy the Little 500 weekend. It's the greatest college week in sport. It, oh, it's the greatest college week in America. You cannot leave that out. That's what it is. Absolutely not. And you can hear them going up behind me. It is loud. Jack, back up to you. I'm going to join the cheers, though. So I'll see you in a little bit. Evan, enjoy the atmosphere down low. It's a great weekend. We've seen SIGAP have maintained their lead. They've made it tough for those two teams, those two rowdy sets of supporters to try and keep their motivation up. And we have seen with Drew Gavet back on the bike for SIGAP, Judah Thompson is still pulling for cutters about a straightaway and a half back, but that gap is starting to increase again. Judah is doing the brunt of this pulling with delts right behind them. Kai Alpha exchanging is just catching back up, but Judah is doing main, the majority of this pulling here and with fresh riders in for Sig App, this gap is increasing again. This is crazy. Final exchange in the back stretch that they're making, announced by Jeremy Gray. Oh man, yeah, Fidel exchange in the back stretch. Oh, and that might be Fidel's race right there. They are now about a straightaway half behind the chase pack. They'll have to work solo to catch back up. And again, this boat's even better for Sig App now that it is just Cutters, Kai Alpha, Delta Del Delta in that chase pack on the lead lap. On the bike is Jonathan Frazier for Kai Alpha. Peterson on. 
for Delta Town Delta. Jonathan Frazier is an underrated rider in the Little 500 community. Did not complete individual time trials because he got into a heavy bike crash that Monday before ITTs. But his coach says that he's a top 10 rider in the field, and he's showing it right now, pulling that chase pack back. As we see Faisai trying to get back. They're almost a lap down. AK size over a lap down. IUDM is right there with Faisai. This pack is hurting. Will Pitts just getting on the bike now for SIG F. Not the cleanest of exchanges. Them and SAE are making an exchange at the exact same time, but he's back on and he's pulling for SAE. And Judah Thompson's on the bike pulling that group in the chasing area. In Phi Delta Theta, I might have spoken too soon. We can see them yeah. about 10 meters behind that chase pack. He is making a huge effort as he goes around turn two. The yellow jerseys in the crowd cheering Look, him man. on, catching back up to that chase pack. They are back in this race. They were not talked about by us entering this. They're wearing the yellow jerseys. They lost three of their four guys last year. Eli Conow, the only one coming back. I'm surprised, Jack, honestly. I am happily surprised by them. We know that they have great coaches in Jeff Beaumont and Joe Hanauer, but losing two of the top ten riders it's hard to win back to back, but they're trying to stick on as Delta Tell Delta goes in for an exchange. Now, Delt, look for them. Again, we have seen them draft cutters for the past 20 or 30 laps now. They are a team that could make their own break for it and catch up to SIG up on their own. Delta Tell Delta making an exchange. Kotlowski comes off the bike for them. They're going to try and get back into that group. Peterson coming onto the bike for Delta Tell Delta. And here comes in cutters for an exchange. No, he did not want to go in. The gap wasn't there. And now Judah Thompson has to go for another lap around this track. This, every rider is hurting on this track today. Yeah. Strategy has gone out the window. SIGF has blown this race apart from lap 65 or 70. Fight out exchange on the far side again. They're making a quick one after trying to catch up after a poor one there. This one looks to be a bit better. Yeah, quick onto the bike there but with all these big movements this these burns trying to get back up to the pack they are reusing energy and I don't know if they can hang with this chase pack very much longer there we see SAE and SIGEP in this long strung out group of teams trying to keep up with SIGEP but they and SIGEP is a lap ahead of all the teams behind him at least they have they have now lapped Phi Kappa Psi they have lapped Fiji they have lapped AK Psi IUDM That's SAE right behind them they have lapped all of those teams, and those teams are still in the top 10. <laughs> Phi, Sig, Sigma Alpha Epsilon is sixth place in this race, and they are a lap behind Sigma Phi Epsilon. That's insane. That is an incredible performance from Sigma Alpha, from Sigma Phi Epsilon so far. And now far. SAE, they know that they're out of this race. They're not fighting with Sig F anymore. They're fighting with the other teams in that pack, so they have to keep on pulling. Sig F is getting free speed while yeah. this chase pack is trying to pull themselves back together, but they don't have anybody to work with. Judah Thompson still on the bike, on a, as well as John Peterson. And Jonathan Frazier still on the bike for Chi Alpha. This gap is not decreasing at all. And now that Sig Ep has really a better pack to work with, surprisingly. Yeah. And we've seen SAE allow him to go through and, and not pull as much here. SAE has been surprisingly cooperative from their fellow row one participant in allowing them to draft behind them, even though they're a lap behind. Again, this may just be inexperienced here, but Luke Noss is a strong rider. I think he just wants to use his speed and use the yeah. strength that he trained for all year. But again, they're not fighting SEGF anymore. They're fighting the red jersey in Phi Kappa Psi, the orange jersey in Fiji, the green red jersey in IUDM. As here we see Delta Tal Delta with a relatively fresh rider on the bike. They're making a solo move now. There is yeah. a there is a whiteboard in their pit box. No rider there. They're saying go, go, go. They are bridging this gap. They are trying to break away from the green jersey and cutters and the white blue jersey in Kai Alpha. Wow. We're seeing Fisa come out for an exchange. They're still a lap behind, obviously. Delta Del Delta, they are trying to do this on their own, just as we predicted a few seconds ago. They have been drafting off of Judah Thompson and Cutters for so long. But just as I say that, Judah Thompson with an effort, with an incredible effort, he has been a great rider today, a freshman in his first Little 500 from Bloomington, Indiana. Great job bridging back up, and that pack now slows back down. The Delta sign says shark. What does that mean? Don't know what that means, Hank. I think it means eat him up and go fast, get Sega. That's actually pretty good. I was wondering how you'd be able to interpret that.
That is Delta Tau Delta. They're slowing up a little bit after Thomas got onto his wheel, but we saw the coaches and the pit of, of cutters point at the wheel of Delta Tau Delta saying, get on that for Thompson. And it's Cray Maywar ready to get back on the bike. Torin is ready for an exchange. And They're doing out. a single bike exchange here. Let's see how it goes. Torin running, looking back, getting the bike a little slow, but pretty safe. Jumps on, and he'll be able to catch back up to Delta Tau Delta just fine. But Kai Alpha now, it looks like they're going for an exchange. They're in second place solo in those, in those white and blue jerseys. Again, another dark horse pick is they're, they're about yep. to exchange on that back stretch, qualifying 15th or 14th in this race. It's also important to note, SIGAP did get into a small crash earlier on in this race, and they still have decided to go for this incredibly aggressive strategy. They're prepping an exchange in this near side. SAE makes an exchange as well, trying to get themselves back in the race. They crashed early on and had to use a lot of matches early and are still going for it. Kudos to them for blowing up this race and making it exciting. Kai Alpha with Ryan Lowe is right back on the wheel of Cray Maywar, trying to keep things up. Let's talk about Ryan Lowe for a second. He is an interesting case. He rode for Black Key Bulls his entire career and decided to change teams. He had not raced for them. He had not called for them. And he said, look, I want a better opportunity, Kai Alpha. And now they're in third place in this race, fourth place in this race, and Black Key Bulls isn't even here today. Yeah, it's crazy how things can work out like that. Said so he felt it in his heart. He wanted to join Kai Alpha. But we see it's Jet Black. Excuse me, Jeff, it's Delta Tau Delta. They're going with a throwback right there. Falling behind them is AK Psy, but they are over a lap behind. They're not in the lead lap. And then Cray Maywar is allowing Lowe to go up front, saying he wants to draft on him. Still about half a lap ahead. Wow. Now still out of straightaway ahead. But Delta Tau Delta working by themselves, Kai Alpha working by themselves. And Delta Tau Delta is making an exchange right now. I don't really understand this at all as the chase pack's about to pass them back up again. Their pit is into it. They are clapping them on, but everybody using so much energy as Sigma Phi Epsilon still working with these lap riders ahead of them to get a draft. Wow. How do you explain that, Jack? <laughs> when you have Phi Kappa Psi, that red jersey with Carson Attenire helping Sigma Phi Epsilon in the lead to keep that lead going. Brady Jarosinski is on the bike now for Phi, or for Delta Tau Delta. Now, do you think possibly that there might be a little bit of friendliness in these fraternity teams in this oh. lead pack here? You have Phi Kappa Psi, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, Phi Gamma Delta, and Beta Sigma Psi all up there. Do you think there's a little bit of a... Beta Theta Pi in the back end as well. A bit of a fraternity there of Greek teams wanting to keep that title in Greek row instead of having cutters and... Del Delta Tau Delta. They may say, hey, let me get on that action <laughs> up front with the Greek life. And Kai Alpha trying to get the independence to win. Wow, we were seeing Cray Maywar make a huge jump. You see him taking the front of that pack right there. He is making a big move right now. Delts and Kai Alpha trying to bridge, not doing well. There's no rider in the pit for cutters right now. They're about a straightaway down. Let me make the argument for why you, you are playing Cray Maywar right here is that you're not going to get into a sprint. It's an endurance battle. And even if you get into a sprint with SIGAP, they've been doing this since lap 50. And are they going to have a guy capable of beating you in a sprint even if Cray Maywar burns a lot of matches here? I think you need to just keep it close now because I think, honestly... I think this comes back together, Jack. I, I think this eventually does. comes back together. SIG app is just dangling about a straightaway and a half ahead of the pack right now. Again, they have teams to work with. Turn two crash. Trying to ID what happened over there. It was, it was Beta Theta Pi who got knocked down there. They're trying to get back on the bike, trying to get themselves back into things. Small crash. Again, turn two, though, the common cause of problems in this right so far that those gusts of wind coming from turn to make you just rub wheel sometimes when you don't want to if you're overlapping in a bad place but Torin Cray Maywar he is making a big effort right now, a solo big effort we see Judah Thompson make big solo efforts Peyton Gaskill makes big solo efforts and now Torin Cray Maywar their main sprinter make a big solo effort try to catch them he's not doing the best job though they're still straight away down in my, in my heart of hearts, I still think this comes back together and we have a two to three team sprint at the end as Sigma Phi Epsilon makes an exchange. And there's uh, Alex Hamilton coming onto the bike there. This race might come back together, but it will be 
hard for them to bring it back at this point. Yeah, it's Sigap on the far side there. Alex Hamilton back on the bike trying to catch back up to that lapped pack to help them out. You can't see graphics on the screen right now. We are on lap 139 as things stand. Currently in first place is Sigma Phi Epsilon and Cutters in second place. Delta Tau Delta in third, Kai Alpha in fourth. We'll give you a full field reset in just a moment, but we'll keep you on lap by lap on as things stand. Passing now under lap 140 is Sigap. Cutters in a bit of a, a just a, about a straightaway behind. And now look at Kai Alpha, Ryan Lowe making a huge burst of energy using that wind behind his back to get onto the wheel of Prey Maywar. They're prepping for an exchange, as is Delta Tau Delta. That's a pair of exchanges for your teams in that back stretch far left side. And that is crucial to do for Kai Alpha and Delta Tau Delta to be Watch out for this exchange. We'll at see the how it same goes. time, it's going to be clean. It's clean. Running, jumping on, yep. back up. Now the key thing about this is they both have each other to work with as they catch back up to cutters in that pack. Spencer. Now again, to just give a little, a slight recap of what the teams were watching are. Sigma Phi Epsilon made an early move around lap 70. They are solo in the lead in those black jerseys called second. Cutters, they are in second place right now in those green jerseys signifying that they got the pole position and qualifications. And then right behind them, Delta Tau Delta in those red and white striped jerseys and Chi Alpha in the white and blue jerseys trying to catch back up to Cutter is still about a straightaway behind Sigma Phi Epsilon. But this pack is in shambles. There are only five teams on the lead lap right now with Phi Delta Theta almost getting lapped by about a straightaway from getting lapped by Sigap. Yeah, and Sigap has got four teams in front of them able to just draft behind. Getting a lot of energy here. It's an exchange as well coming onto the bike now is Jacob Kuhn on for Cray May War. And we haven't seen Jacob Kuhn on the bike in a while because Cutters has had to use their big firepower. Let's see what Jacob can do because it's been, I want to say about 70 or 80 laps since we've seen him, if I'm not mistaken. Let's get some insight into the SIGAP strategy. Evan Kamika, what you got for us? Well, Jack, right now I, I can't really tell you much about their strategy besides the fact that they are winning. But I can tell you an interesting note about SIGAP is that there is three rookies on this team despite a lot of newcomers. Like we said earlier, the family community, they are a close-knit team. They've done a ton of things together, like watching March of Madness, playing Xbox. They like to get really competitive, and you can see right now that competitiveness is really helping. And last but not least, they are a team that absolutely loves Chick-fil-A, but occasionally they'll go get Chubbies for a group dinner now. There's a lot of laps to go, and we've seen, like yesterday, the race could flip in a matter of seconds. We'll see what happens. Jack, back up to you. Well, thank you, Evan. We're seeing SIGEP kind of in the back of this group here. But we see Delta Tau Delta trying to make a big move with those two chase teams. Man, less than a straightaway behind. This is exactly as, as close as it has been since they first made this move around lap 70. Kai Alpha trying to pull forward, but there's a little miscommunication in that pack. Well, Sig Up is just allowed to sit in with those lapped riders and draft. This is Kuhn's first lap since lap 69, so he's had a good chunk of time to be able to get off the bike, and he's the third guy in that little chase group right there. So this is key for cutters. Kuhn is not there to make moves. He is there to get their other riders freshened up. They want Torin fresh. They want Peyton fresh. They want Judah fresh because they've all made big efforts to just stay in this race. Jacob Kuhn is there to just follow Delta Tau Delta and help make some pulls to come back up to this lead in Sigma Phi Epsilon, which is down to about three quarters of a straightaway. Josh Herbst on the bike for Delta Tau Delta right now, pulling themselves into the front of that little three team group. Four teams there, but three teams on the lead lap. They can see SIGAP as close as it's been in quite some time. They are drafting off a Phi Kappa sign that red jersey, 3PH in, in that blue and orange jersey. But again, those teams are a lap plus down, and Fiji right behind them, they're also a lap plus down. SIGAP is getting free speed yeah, right they're here. They're using 3PH and Phi Psi in front of them as speed. But it looks like Josh Herbst is making an incredible effort to catch back up. 6.6 second gap right now. It's It was as much as 21 seconds at one point. It's now been cut into a third. This gap is coming down as we speak. Sigup is just kind of soft pedaling, drafting. They are playing for a sprint right now. You think so? They, they know that these three teams behind them are having to catch back up and use their energy. I think we have four, we have 55 laps to go. I think this comes back together. Sigup a bit boxed in right here. 
It's getting spread out a bit, and there's going to make an exchange here. This is going to come back together with this exchange. I don't oh. know about this. With Will Pitts coming on the bike, you have Josh Herbst catching back up. Let's see if he can make that move before Will gets his speed back. Now oh, he's got coming on the inside. Here comes is Kuhn. Jacob Kuhn again, fresh as a daisy since lap 69. They are about two or three seconds behind. Man, and there it is. We've got a quarter of a straightaway gap between them. The end right behind cutters is Delta Tau Delta. Kai Alpha, a bit of a chunk behind them as well. Will Pitts getting caught up in lap traffic. Jacob Kuhn making the move back to Sigma Phi Epsilon. Let's see what goes on here. Yeah, in front of him is Beta Theta Pi, and the coaches are saying, slow down. Well, it's been almost a hundred laps here of Sig Ep in front. We go, Jack. We have Delta Tau Delta and Cutters just about to bridge up to Sig Ep. Wow. We see them come together in our picture. Three teams together. Kai Alpha about 30 or 40 meters behind. There's Kuhn, and there's the moment. Cutters passes Sig at first time. We've got a different leader in over 100 laps. We have got a bike race. Wow. Jacob Kuhn, what a move by him coming on to help freshen up Cutters, Peyton, Torn, and Judah to catch back up. And guess what? Now that they're together, this pack is going to sit up, slow down, and <laughs> get are. ready for some fireworks oh, for the next man. 52 laps. Man, so who's on the bike right now for Sig Is it Will Pitts on the bike? Will Pitts is on the bike for Sig We have Jacob Is he Kuhn. their ideal sprinter then? He is their ideal so sprinter, So where do you get yes. him off the bike? I would say if possible, again, this race ha has gone to shamble so early. There is no ideal sprinter at this point. No Delta strategy Delta going now is on. First place, by the way. But if, if you're looking for the perfect strategy for Sig F, you want Will Pitts to not ride one lap after 175. I would say he does this set, maybe one more set, and then rest him for the end because, excuse me, this is Max Martin on the bike for Sig F right now. So Will Pitts is sitting right now but I would still have him sit up until about 175, get him some rest before the sprint because this is going to end in a reduced bunch sprint, I bet. The Delta Tau Delta fan base, you see him, I believe that's them on camera right now as their guys are about to go by them. There's Herps on the bike who made an absolutely humongous effort to come back on that one. So to recap on who the sprinters are for each of the teams, Cutter's main sprinter is Torin Cray Mayor. He, you want him sprinting for Cutter's. Delta Tau Delta in those red and white striped jerseys. You want Josh Herbst, who's on the bike right now. So if I'm Delta, I want to get him off soon. Maybe give him one more set and then rest him for the end. But again, Jack, everybody has used energy. Nobody knows how good, how well they are going to be able to sprint on lap 200 after all of these efforts. They mentioned before and they viewed themselves as one of the big three alongside Sigep and Cutters, well, they are right alongside them in a three-team lead. Kayaf has fallen off a little bit in terms of the chase pack. But actually, no, excuse me, they are right behind it now. So Kayaf exchanged a few laps ago, and that was a great effort. right there. Effort 44 laps. From Sean Grimm to catch back up to that pack. So we have a four-team lead pack there. With, with 50 laps to go. Cray Maywar has done 44 laps for cutters so far today. That is more than they expected him to do, I bet. Coming yeah. into this race, you want... Cutter's traditional sprinter strategy is leave the sprinter as fresh as a daisy. Look back to 2018 and 19 when Noble Guyon had only done one or two sets, no more than 25 laps in the entire race before he comes on and sprints. Torin riding 44 laps, that was not in the playbook today for them. We've seen got Phi Kappa Psi is kind of pulling this group, but they are a lap behind. And you see Herbs kind of waving Sigap in front of him, saying, <laughs> he's literally waving him. He's saying, go take the spot in front of me. And Sigap says, no, no, thank you. I use my energy. I made this race happen. It's your he's, turn you to see, do something. You see Herbs just pointing him repeatedly, trying to get him to take that space on the outside Beta Theta Pi. He's going to make an exchange. But again, with only four Third teams PH, on the lead lap right now, they don't have to worry about anybody else catching up. Nope. It, it is a four-team race with 47 laps to go. Man. In that fifth spot is Phi Kappa Psi, and Phi Psi is right in front of them. So as this race slows down a little bit, one thing to look for once this race heats back up is body language. As a rider on the bike, you want to pay attention to how the rider looks on a bike. 
Are their elbows bent? Is there much body movement? If their arms are straight as an arrow and they're swaying left and right, they are tired. You want to take advantage of that. If their head is coming down and swaying. Look at Cutters. They're being marked by Sigep. Here we go. There is no rider in the pit for Cutters right now. Or Jacob, Sigep. Jacob Kuhn is just making a move. But Max Martin and Sig App is right on their tail. Josh Herbst is also following in behind. Kai Alpha as well is right behind them as well. The Cutters is preparing for an exchange potentially. Are they going to break out? They shouldn't. Wow, right on the inside there was IUDM. That Lucas was a Troutman one. with an interesting move there on the curb. That yeah. could have been very dangerous, especially as a lapped rider in the pack with, that, with those leaders. Yeah, a lot of lapped riders in this pack. It's kind of slowed down a little bit. Last lap, 38 seconds. Troutman is going for a bit of a push here, as is Phi Kappa Psi. He's drafting off of him. But again, we do not need to worry about Phi Kappa Psi in that red jersey. They are a lap behind. One thing to look out for, actually, is if these lap teams are able to unlap themselves. Yes. That's, this is their, I think Phi Psi is seeing the teams around him saying, this is four teams. Sig Apps are behind me. Let's I'm see pushing. what Phi hey, can do in the next couple laps. Phi isn't going for an exchange. They're going for a, just a massive push. They've done this now three times. They've gone for a big burn like this, and they're trying to get it on the next lap around. And I think that's still Carson Et and I are on the bike. Let's see if he does another lap or two to get an advantage. Looks like they're going to make an exchange right here. So this pack only cares about Cutters, Sig Up, Delta Tau Delta, Chi Alpha. Those are the four teams that they care about. By side, they are not marking them. And you see they already have a straightaway lead here. This is their time to get back into it with 45 laps left because those leaders are not going to chase them that hard. So here is, uh, we've seen Fyside Fyside doing front. another lap up in front. Yeah. They are making their move right now to try to unlap themselves. Their pit box is calm as a cucumber. They know what's going on. They got, they're, they're repeatedly putting them out there for the exchange right as the teams are coming by and putting them back away. They're on back on the lead lap now. Hmm. Find out today. Not find out today. I was saying them because they're making an exchange here in the back stretch. But Phi Kappa Psi, keep an eye out on them as we go forward here. Also, Fiji, they're at the front of this group. And here comes Beta Sig, who's also a lap down. Again, so many lapped teams in this pack. This if you moment. want to unlap yourselves, th now is the time with still 40 laps left. Once we get to 175 or 180, the fireworks will go off again. And whatever opportunity you had is done. Albert Schaefer on so the bike now for Phi Psi, who just made an exchange. Phi Psi making a move. Beta Sigma Psi is also about... 50 to 60 meters in front of this Look, pack right now. Lucas Troutman, they're a lap behind. He could try and make something happen here. IUDM is, might be the team of the day with Lucas Troutman riding an incredible amount of laps yeah. so far. They may try and make either an exchange or some move here. They're not prepping an exchange with Troutman. Following it behind is Grey Goat. Grey Goat was with a big injury, with a big crash earlier. Wow. See so, you know, front Troutman in the front of that group ahead of them. Ghost Cycling, AK Psy is making an exchange. So I believe IUDM is actually two laps down right now, trying to just get back to one lap They are down. indeed, they are indeed. They are one, They are two laps behind, that's great. But the two teams to look for right now making a move are Beta Sigma Psi, you can see them going around turn one right now in those black and pink jerseys, and then Phi Kappa Psi, they are almost yeah. a half a lap down from catching up to that lead pack, and that lead pack is four wide. They are not doing much right now. They so have the, Albert Schaefer on the bike. Red jerseys of Phi Kappa Psi, watch out for them. Again, a storied past, a tragic recent history. Let's see if they can rewrite history this year and get back into it. I'm going to make a bit of a guess here. I think they're putting these guys out to make the other teams think they're about to make an exchange, but Schaefer got on the bike about two laps ago. I can't imagine he's coming off the bike. If you're being technical about that, that is illegal. You're only allowed Ooh. to have the bike in the pit for, I believe, max to two laps. But it's race day. Things <laughs> happen. I'm not an official. I'm just an observer. <laughs> that was your race director popping back out saying, hang on a minute. Fiji is alongside Phi Psi. So here comes Phi Kappa Psi for an exchange. They are making exchanges. Kai Alpha, great burn out in front of the lead pack to put a fresh rider on. Again, this lead pack is not Slow. going fast at all. Slow. And these lap teams are starting to realize we can make our mark right now. This is the time to do it. Let's head down now to pit 11. Evan is with Delta Tau Delta. 
Thanks, Jack. I'm here in the pits of Delta Tau Delta with student coach Jack Lloyd. Jack, so far second place right now. How has your strategy been effective to this point? You know, we came in with the plan. Sig up, blew it up early. Um, we had to burn some matches to get back in the pack, but our guys are fresh. We're feeling strong. We're looking forward to the end. Well, Jack, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Jack, back to you. Nice one there from Evan, just on some quick insight into what Delta Tau Delta is doing. They mentioned it. The strategy got blown up by Sig Ep. Good to see the teams down low are also in the same mindset as us. Man, Faisai, they are less than a straightaway away. Faisai Fai is, is about to unlap themselves, and we're about to have a five-team oh, race in a second, Jack. Beta Sig is the next team to watch right out now, for. Right now, Cutters does not want to pull. Delta Del Delta does not want to pull. Okay, so Cutters is making an exchange here. We've seen that a couple of times today. I thought early on they just weren't making good burns. This is the strategy, and I've thought about this before. They are specifically not burning into the exchange to not stretch out the pack. They are doing a little surprise exchange where the pack is slow and soft to give the rider coming back on an easy time to get back in that pack. Gaskell getting on the bike. Let's head down now to Abby Heyman. She's with Kai Alpha for some more strategy talk. You guys are currently in second. Talk to me about what type of strategy you're going to use going into these last 40 laps of the race. I mean, the race has just been crazy so far. We've had uh, a half lap deficit to stick up and it took us about 50 laps to work with delts and cutters to bring this thing back. So I think right now we're, we're just going to be aware of some counter attacks and uh, I'll try to sit in and try, hopefully it comes down to a sprint finish. We'd really like those chances for us. But um, yeah, it's just it's a very slow race right now just because of how much work everyone's had to do. So we're just going to try to sit in real quick and just be very conservative. Awesome. Good luck. Thank you so of much. Course. Back to you. Thank you, Abby. They, they favor themselves in a sprint finish. They want to get this down there. Sig App is making a big burnout on the front. Are they going to be chased by cutters? It looks like they are going to be. Ooh, and a little slide out in turn four, but it still hangs on as the little rumble oh, wheel. There's a crash. Fiji's down. Fiji goes Jet down. Kai Alpha goes down. Delta down. Delta, Delta go down. CSF goes down. Sig App is in the lead. Cutters in the lead alone. Cutters is in the lead alone. The other two contenders are down. Kai Alpha needs a bike. They're running it to him. Wow, Cutters has got a half straightaway edge on things. Kai Alpha's back on their bike. Jet Black, the man going down was Albert Schaefer. Excuse me, no, no, it was, it was Josh Herbst who got knocked down in that crash. He's trying to catch back up. They're going to try to exchange in the back stretch there. There is a green flag. There is not a yellow flag yet. Green flag, they're still racing. Yeah, green flag. So they're making exchange as well, as is so Cutters. So Cutters is in the lead. Gaskell get on the bike. Judah Thompson, Thompson on, the on the bike. bike. And Gaskell here on. comes Sigma Phi Epsilon to bridge the gap. It is a two-team race again. And Phi wow. Kappa Psi is now in third place, Jack. Only about a straightaway and a half behind. Cutters is not stopping. Where are Sigma, where are Kai Alpha and Delta Del Delta? We have, we, they're a half lap down now. It was Fiji that was involved in the crash. Kai Alpha's trying to catch back up. There was a rub of wheels and elbows with Cutters and Fiji. When Cutters tried to exchange, Fiji went down and Kai Alpha and Delta got caught up in it. And now it is a two team race with Sig F and Cutters, the two teams we talked about before this race. They are together a half lap ahead, Jack. These are the fireworks we talked about. Wow. That was a remarkable sequence there. Faisai still working with SAE. SAE a lap down, but Faisai only about a straightaway and a half down right now. SAE in ninth, Faisai in third. So to update you, Cutters one, Sigap two, Faisai three, Delta Tau Delta four, Fiji five, Kai Alpha six. But on that lead lap is six teams it appears. Chaos, absolute chaos. And at Delta Del Delta has just spun way in front of Kai Alpha. Now straight away in front of Kai Alpha. Kai Alpha is falling apart after that crash. They had to run a bike all the way from their turn three pit to the turn four location of the crash. We see where are so Cutters and Sigma Phi Epsilon are coming around turn two right now. Phi Kappa Psi just making an exchange in turn one, and Delta Del Delta He's bridging the gap with Phi Psi. So Phi Psi and Delta will work together to bridge that gap in, now Kai Alpha is still about a straightaway behind them. Josh Herbst is still the man on the bicycle. He was in the crash, excuse me, he came off the bicycle. It's Kotlowski on the bike. Thank you, Josh Herbst was the guy who crashed Kotlowski back on the bike. Herbst was involved in a crash before last year's race, broke his collarbone. If he was involved in a crash like that last year, racing career probably would have been done. He's off there though. Five second penalty, Five second penalty has, been has been assessed to Fiji. So Phi Gamma Delta, 
when when that happened, I I I need to see a replay of it. But five game of Delta, I guess, impeded cutters and therefore got an impeding penalty, and now they have to spend five seconds in the pit box. That Essentially, what that is is when you are riding on the track, you have to ride parallel to the gutter. Okay, here's a replay of the crash. Let's see what happened. Here comes cutters and Fiji, and I guess Fiji. I, you can't five really see what on happened. Fiji. He kind of gets on the back of his wheel, bumps into it. I don't know if that's the right decision, Jack. Honestly, it looked like Cutters was coming out yeah. into the middle of the pack, and Fiji was just following his line, was just a little bit slower. I need to see a better replay of that, but that is a controversial decision to say the least yeah. here. It knocks Fiji more or less out of the race because they have to take a five second penalty at some point. And their team is furious. You can see John Gudeman on that trainer bike there in the pit throwing his hands up, yelling. They do not like this, that decision one bit, and if I, if I were on that team, I would not like this, that decision either. It was Gaskell on the bike, an experienced guy for cutters, and the crash happened there. Faisai on the lead lap, as mentioned. Her, uh, Kotlowski's making a big push, trying to get themselves back up, but it's SIGAP and cutters. If you're SIGAP and cutters, are you almost working together to keep these contenders oh, away absolutely. from you? absolutely, and that's what they're doing right now. Right now, they are not going full out. They're going maybe a tempo ride slightly above tempo or threshold, but they're working together to keep Delta Tau Delta and Chi Alpha out of this race. And Chi Alpha still working solo, trying to just catch up to Delta. But if I say, let's not forget about them bridging the lap almost and now in fourth place working with Delts and they have a good pack to work with about a straightaway and a half down from Cutters and Sig out. An exchange made now by Fiji. That, that, that penalty will be one to look back on and really review. That is, that is one of the most controversial laps. decisions I've seen in a long time in Little 500. In that instance, would you almost say no penalty? I, if you're going to call a penalty, I don't want to say it, but I might call it on cutters because it looked like they, they were not riding parallel to the gutter. It looked, it looked like they were riding away from the gutter there. And Fiji was just following their line, but I would I would call it as a racing incident. It's racing, it happens, yeah. rub wheels. Well, let's we, you, who's on the bike right now? It's Judah Thompson for cutters, and I believe it's Drew Get Gavette for Sigap. Wow. All right, let's give you a full race reset at the moment. It's been an absolutely crazy race, and I'm not sure we'll have time in the next 30 laps to give you something there. In 33rd, it's Kai Phi, Army, Phi Sigma Kappa, Wild Aces, Alpha Kappa Lambda, Tau Epsilon Phi, Human Wheels, Beta Theta Pi, Pi Kappa Alpha, Delta Sigma Pi, CSF Cycling, Lambda Chi Alpha, Evan Scholars, Novus, Chinzano, Sigma Nu, Alpha Kappa Psi, Alpha Sigma Phi, Forest, Gray Goat, 3PH, Bears and Ghost Cycling, IUDM, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, Phi Delta Theta, and these teams not on the lead lap yet. Phi Delta Theta in, or Phi Gamma Delta in seventh, Beta Sigma Psi in sixth, Chi Alpha in fifth, Delta Tau Delta, Phi Kappa Psi, Cutters, Sigma Phi Epsilon. And it looks like Chi Alpha, unless I'm mistaken, has caught up to that pack with Delta Tau Delta and Phi Psi. So there are three lead lap teams now working together to catch the two leaders in Cutters and SIGAP, and it's down to about a straightaway now. It might be about a seven or eight second gap. This race is not just between two teams, and you know once it comes down to the final 10 laps, there will be games played by Sigma Phi Epsilon and Cutters. They will not want to pull, they will not want to work together, and you see some teams, you will see some teams bridge back up, just as we're seeing right now Kotlowski. with Delta Tau, Delta Blake Kotlowski coming around turn one, trying to bridge the gap solo. Josh Herbst described him to me as their secret weapon, someone that he feels the field did not see as a big threat. He's trying to make a big push here for an exchange in the back stretch. So the second group of chasers that's being mentioned is including, we've seen an exchange in the back stretch for Delta Tau Delta, as the Cutters and SIGEP in that lead lap. So there are 25 laps to go right now. If I'm Cutters and SIGEP, I work together for the next 10 laps or so. You do not want to let these chasers come back up to you all. You knew coming into the, this race it was a two-man battle, and those are the two up there, and you want to keep it at two. You have some good sprinters back there ready 
to beat you all, and you know that you're the teams to beat. You want to keep working together, but again, come lap 190, 195, when you try to put your final riders on, you're playing games, you don't want to lead somebody out, Games are played in cycling. The pack will slow down. Co cooperation will slow down, and that chase pack can easily catch back up. Sigep takes the lead very slightly, and he's going to allow Thompson to go back in front. This is a real interesting dynamic. Third race for Gavet. First race for Thompson. The guy that you mentioned is one of the Wonder Kids versus an experienced third race rider in Gavet. And again, in this chase pack that you're seeing, so in this lead pack that you're seeing right now, that orange jersey of Fiji, they have yet to serve their penalty. They are not in the lead lap, but they will have to serve a penalty within, within the next few laps or so. When you, when you are served a penalty within the race, you have to serve it within the next 10 laps, I believe. And all those teams behind them, Go Cycling, Pike, Human Wheels, Tep, Sigma Nu, those are all multiple laps behind. So those, that black jersey and green jersey, those are the only two teams who will do any work in this pack right now. Gavette pushing up into the front now in this two-team dynamic up front. Making a move on the outside is Delta Tau Delta. And Delta Tau Delta with a fresh rider on the bike, they are making a big move. Faisai on their wheel. Phi Delta Theta, where are Phi Delta Theta at? They're more out of this. Phi Delta, I believe, they are eighth. They are in eighth place. They're not out of it completely. But they are still a lap, behind, a lap behind all these chasers. It's tough. It's going to be a tough, tough effort in the next 25 laps to do that. So Fidel bridging up, and here comes Delta Tell Delta. They are they are bridging up yeah. to, cu to Cutters and Sigma Phi Epsilon. You'll see them come around turn one in just a second. They have bridged that gap. We have a three-team race now. John Peterson on the bike for... Delta Tau Delta, they have a 2.7 second gap behind them. It's getting even shorter as they've gotten right behind them. Delta Tau Delta, they are right on that yellow jersey of Phi Delta Theta's wheel. You see them now, the red and white striped jersey of Delta Tau Delta. There are three teams now at this lead pack with 23 laps to go. And Phi Psi is not too far behind as well. Phi Psi, it looks like about five seconds behind. They are trying hard with Carson Etnire. Carson Etnire has run a magnificent race, tried so hard to unlap themselves. And then Kai Alpha, where are they now? There's, they're about a half lap behind Just the under. leaders. So about five. Yeah, Faisai was down a lap, just four seconds behind now. Kai Alpha, 15 seconds behind. Beta Sig, a lap behind. Man. Jack, this has been one of the most crazy, chaotic, <laughs> insane races I've seen in my lifetime. If you're fight out here, you're a lap behind these guys. They're making a bit of a, a, a burst here, and Thompson's get, gonna get on his wheel, looks behind himself. It's a four-team stretch here. I don't here. know if Judah understands that Fidel's a lap behind, but he is using them as a little propeller to keep going. Fidel is, is, is going on very short sets right now. That rider was only on for about four to five laps. They're, they're struggling to keep up. They're still a lap down from, from everybody at this point try to beat those chasers because this race is going to blow apart even more but at this point for Fidel stay in that lead pack even if you're a lap down and hope for the best come later All right on the outside is Delta Tau Delta they take first place and nobody wants to chase them uh, Judah and Drew are just looking at each other and it looks like John Peterson and Delt gets a free uh, gap to make an exchange yeah, Delta Tau Delta trying to make an exchange in the back stretch We'll see who that is. There's 20 laps left in this race. And that wind is still an incredible factor. As soon as you go around turn two to, the, to that back stretch, whoever's in first, you are just getting met with a face full of wind. So there's Delta Tau Delta trying to get back into things. Faisai still struggling to catch up. They're about a half a straightaway behind these riders, but nobody to work with. There's an exchange for cutters. Or excuse me, they're not going to do it. A little fake exchange, something we haven't seen in quite some time. Oh. And Sig out with a little fake exchange. They are playing games with, with each other, Jack. <laughs> this is fun cycling. This is high-quality strategic cycling. Brady Jarosinski's on the bike for Delta Tau Delta. He's just a bit behind those leading two groups in Cutters and SIGEP. It's a three-team group there. A bit further behind is Phi Kappa Psi. A bit further behind them is Kai Alpha. Man, one, two, three. Cutters, SIGEP, It looks Delts. like Cutters is lining up for an exchange. Judah Thompson slowing this pack down. 
Are they going to exchange now? Yeah, uh, no. No, they're waiting another lap. Let's see what they do. It looks like Jacob Kuhn was set to come on the bike, but he did not. And don't look now, but but Phi Kappa Psi is back in this race. They have bridged a lap. They have chased back. We have a four-team race now. We've passed two hours now. <laughs> it's flown by. Less than 20 laps and to go. And you can see that crowd is thrilled by it. Let's see if Phi Kappa Psi can rewrite their recent history and come home with a trophy. Thompson, he's a freshman. We'll see if he makes the exchange now. Kuhn is ready to come on. He's getting towards the outside. But with no gap, I would expect this pack to start pushing it. Cutter's going exchange. with the no bird strategy, and Drew Gavette is going for it. They know what Cutters is doing, and Jacob Kuhn with the big gap to chase. That is what that is the game you play when you don't burn like that. It worked early, but later in the race, teams know what you're doing, and that is a big risk reward as Drew Gavette is going for it, and possibly for an exchange as they put a bike in that Sigat Pet pit in turn one. Jarozinski is right on his tail for Delta Tau Delta. Phi Kappa Psi is falling off a little bit. They may try and get an exchange, get a bu another guy Drew on the Gavette bike. Drew going to fight with some lap traffic here. Might not be able to make the exchange. He's he trying won't. to. He says, no, I'm going another lap. As no, he's not. As Jacob, oh, he is exchanging. Excuse me. He's coming off for Alex Hamilton. He's the rookie sophomore in his first race. And passing Delta him as Jarozinski. Delta is in the lead now. They may look to make an exchange pretty soon. So we have Delta Tail Delta in the red and white striped jersey in the lead. Sega bridging back up. But Jacob Kuhn, again, with that no burn by Gajuda Thompson, he has had to work over a lap and a half now to bridge back up and is just now doing it. But again, if we're talking about matches in that limited match box, he used another one right there. And we are coming down to 15 laps to go. Man. And it's slowing down a lot. Kai Alphanel making exchange in turn three about a straightaway and a half behind this pack. But if, if this pack keeps playing games with each other, they might come back up. There's Just Kuhn. Kuhn Jacob making a big Kuhn move up the inside. Cutters going. He's passed back on the inside and not able to keep up. But every team knows what they're doing. They are chasing down the green jersey, the pre-race favorites in Cutters. Jarosinski right behind. Gavette, or excuse me, excuse me, Hamilton on the bike as well, and they've slowed up a little bit. These Kuhn. are all experienced riders. They are not trying to make the move. They're just playing with each other, trying to see which attack sticks. This is the, the exact same strategy as the end of a one-day spring classic, your Paris-Roubaix, your, your Tour of Flanders. When you don't have any teammates in the field with you, you are just trying to see what sticks, and I would argue another few attacks, one of these might stick. Look okay, at Kai Alpha. Kai Alpha, as his pack slows down, is about to bridge back up to this pack. We're going to have a five team race with 14 laps to go. It is indeed five teams come up in the inside as SAE, but no one's going to follow them. Now, the question is who makes the first counterattack and where are the sprinters? Who do you put on and when do you put them on? Jet Black is ready in an exchange in the far side. Jarosinski may try to make a burn here. Peyton Gaskill in the pit for Cutters standing there with the bike. He'll be right in a few laps. Will Pitts, we have not seen him in quite a yeah, while. We haven't seen Torrin since lap 141. So I imagine Cutters, they'll exchange to Peyton around lap 189, 190. He'll do five laps and give it to Torrin for the end. Sig Epp, I would imagine that Alex Hamilton on the bike right now sticks another four to five laps on, gives it to Will Pitts in the end, and Josh Herbst, we have not seen him on the bike in quite no, some time he either. He was in the crash. We'll see if he's going to be fit enough to try and be in the final sprint should it come to that. Just a 17 mile an hour lap and last Fi time out. Five cap aside, don't forget about them. Carson Ettenayer has done a lot of work today. I don't know how well they do in a sprint, but he would probably be their sprinter. And Kai Alpha, Jonathan Frazier, one of the most underrated riders in the field. Look out for him as Delta Tau Delta. Again, they're just playing with each other. They know they don't want to leave them out, but somebody needs to make a move. Jarzinski, is he going for a burn? He Looks is like going he is. for a burn. He has a gap. Five side doesn't want to chase. Sigup is having to chase now. Great. Yellow move. flag. Yellow flag is going. Yellow flag. Where's the crash? We have a yellow flag. Yellow flag is going. That ruins the attempt to move there. A yellow flag with 12 laps left. I don't see a crash on the track, Jack. I don't either. 
having to slow down the Oh, lines. there's something going on in Wild Ace's pit box over there. Team number 31 around turn two. It's in the pit box of Wild Aces. I'm not sure what happened over there, but there is a yellow flag, which delays any move going on. But Delta Tell, Delta and Brady Jaruzinski with a slight gap. No, they're, they're still in the lead pack together. So there's no gap. These five riders are still together as Cutters smartly makes an exchange, putting Peyton Gaskill on the bike. So what looks like it's going to have to happen is after get him across the track, there was an issue in the pits. So after get him across the track, we may, I don't know what a red situation looked like here. If they get someone across the track. I mean, they would not red flag it. This yellow flag goes on as long as needed. And if necessary, they would finish this race under yellow. And if that happens, it looks like Delta Tell Delta is in the lead yeah. by a hair. Not not on here, but they were when the flag went. They were went. in the lead, so Delta Tell Delta would win this race if the if the yellow flag goes on for another 10 laps. So we'll keep and you updated on what's just happening. To, just to keep you honest here, a yellow flag lap takes about 55 seconds to a minute to complete. So we're looking at, if there is a yellow flag of about 8 to 10 minutes, we may see the race end under yellow that would be atrocious for what this race has been so far no, it looks like they have gotten him across the pit i think we should be good to come back into the race in just a moment only issues have to re-establish who's on the bike when so cutters made an exchange had to get back in line so cutters made one of the best exchanges there but now they're about 20 meters behind the pack but peyton gaskell can get that up in a second yeah sig up faisai delts and kayaf are all up there leading and we'll make at least one more exchange to put the sprinter on for the last exchange. It looks like Will Pitts is in the pit box for SIGAP. Josh Herb should be ready for Delts. Torn Cray Mayer is still in the bike for Cutters. He had a jacket on. He's ditched it, though. It looks like we're readying ourselves for a green flag to come back onto things. And then Kai Alpha, I want to look at where Jonathan Frazier is and where Car Carson Etnayer is. Well, they're all together. The green flag is going. We're back. Ten laps. Less than. Here we go. Peyton Gaskell catches back up to this lead pack of five riders. And Sig F is pushing it. I'm not sure what they're trying to do here because everybody else is following. And Kayaf, are they going for an exchange with no gap? They are. They are exchanging right now. So they'll have a major gap to catch up to. Sig F going in for an exchange. It looks like to Will Pitts with eight laps to go. They're making an exchange. I don't know how I feel about this. A little bit too long to go. They're bringing Pitts on. This might be his last burst to try that to win the race. Sprinter. He will be on for the end of the race. And Alex Hamilton crashes Eight into laps. the turn one pit boards, exhausted from a great effort. Eight laps for Pitts. So we still have yet to see, it looks like, Cutters. They will probably make another exchange to put Torin on. Delft will make another exchange to put Josh Herbst on. And then Faisai will stay on. Herbs is on the bike Herbst right now. Herbs is on the bike right now, so they are probably done making exchanges for the race. And Carson Ettenheyer is on the bike. So it looks like maybe only Cutters makes one more, ex more exchange as Jason Fowler, their pit coach, is talking to Torin Cray Mayor, giving him the strategy for what to do in these next few laps. Those are the five. That group right there. Delta Tau Delta, Cutters, Faisai, Sigep, Kai Alpha. Right now, in the next four to five laps, it's all about positioning, Jack. It is where you want to be. With this wind, you do not want to be leading the pack coming into turn two. You want to slingshot around them just like in NASCAR as Cutters and Peyton Gaskill go for this exchange. Here's the moment. To Cor Torin Cray Mayer, the riders are trying to catch him, but Peyton putting a massive effort in here. They want him to make the exchange. He's going to have Let's to see. slow up. Wow, that was a fast exchange. Fast exchange. Not the most legal, but it worked in this case. And Torin Cremayer is going to be the freshest person on the bike going into the last five laps. Haven't seen him since lap 141. Over 50 laps he's been prepping. The freshest rider in the field right now. He's prepping himself. He's slow. He's the fifth placed guy right now. So, does anybody make a long range attack? Does anybody go right now? I don't think so. Maybe a Jonathan Frazier or a Carson Ettenheyer go for it because you they know that Josh Herbst, Will Pitts, and Torn Craig Mayer are the best sprinters in the field. So
So it's a game of cat and mouse. This is the bike race. They're saying lap riders stay on the outside. We have a park sign up in the cutter's pit. We're going to see what that might mean. It's, it means draft off those riders, get a good position. Where you want to be in the next couple laps is not in the front row. You want to be near the outside, preferably second wheel, so you can slingshot around and you don't have to get boxed in by those riders slingshotting around you. If you are on the inside of this group near the back, you are not going to win this sprint. Herbst up in front, Etnair in second, Pitts in third. Rounding things out in the back is Cray Mayer. Maywar, excuse me. This is a race of experienced cyclists. They know what they are doing. They have trained all year long for this. And as a fan, this is incredibly thrilling. And, it, and it's on Jonathan Frazier for Kayafa. When are they going to go? When I imagine move? nobody goes until about 197, 198. It won't be sudden, but it will ramp up gradually and gradually as riders want that good position. Again, you may have one rider try to make a long range attack, but at this point in the race, it rarely works. So I would imagine that 198, the, the pace starts to pick up. And then once they see that white flag, it is guns a blazing for the next 30 seconds. Herbst. Cray, Maywar, Carson, Frazier, and Pitts. Fiji's half lap back. As is Beta Sigma Psi. Herbst is currently the man pulling things out in front, but it's not a fast lap at all. Just to under 50 seconds. Three laps to go in the little 500. What we don't want here is lap traffic interfering with this race here. And so far, the lap riders have been doing a great job of that. Josh Herbst has, is wanting to lead this out. That is a confident strategy from him. I don't know how I feel about that, but if he likes being in first, he gets to dictate the moves right now, and he gets to follow anything. Sig F right now, I think, is in the best position with cutters right behind them. Those are the sprinters that they are looking for, and Will Pitts and Torin Craig Mayer, they're going to slingshot on the outside in a couple laps' time. I think Beta Sig and SAE are also in this group. Two laps to go. Two laps to go. SAE is there. They've got Luke Noss on the bicycle. The Beta Sig has Ben McEwen on. You are absolutely right. SAE and Luke Noss is back in this. Phi Gamma Delta is back in this. Phi Delta, sorry, Phi Delta is not in this. But we have a bigger They're going now. Josh Herbst is going. Here comes Torn Cray Mayer around the outside. Get the white flags ready. Here we go into turn Josh three. Josh Herbst and Tor Torin Cray May are trying to get that position. Cray May Stay walk. safe here as a big gust of wind comes in. White flag goes. One lap left. Cray May War takes the lead. Josh Herbst in second place as Torin soft pedals into turn one. He does not want that lead. He wants to stay safe. When does the move happen? When does Josh Herbst go? Can he make the move around Torin Cray May Here we go. Two turns left. Cray Maywar in the lead. Herps on the outside. Pitts on his outside. What will it be? The checkered flag is ready. History 15. A sprint to the finish and cutters adds further daylight in history. An incredible race from start to finish. Sigat made a huge move early in the race. And they were there at the end. Josh Herbst, Will Pitts have to watch as Torin Cray Maywar crosses the finish line in first place. The red flag goes, and there we have it. Unofficial results will be brought to you in just a moment. But just 52 laps for Torin Cray Maywar. He will not end his career at the Little 500 without a title, and he puts it up. The one, the five, 15 times. Cutters, Delta Tau Delta, Sig F, Chi Alpha, Phi Kappa Psi. Wow. Evan is down in the pit. We're gonna toss it to him when he's ready, but the pure emotions of the little 500 
on full display here today. We'll get it down to Evan in a moment. Hank, just quick thoughts on that for, for the cutters. Pure ecstasy. That was one of the best races strategically, strength-wise, I have ever seen in my lifetime. And Torin Crate Mayor, after 2021, sprinted, did not win, came off the track crying. Last year, put in a tough situation, didn't win. To redeem himself in his senior year race, to win the Little 500 in an all-time classic race in that sprint finish? Wow. What a day. We've got Evan down there. He's with Peyton. We'll toss it down to Evan right now with the winning team. Thanks, Jack, here with the champions. Cutters, for a 15th time, you won your pole position. You didn't lead that much, but it didn't matter. How does it feel to win the 2023 Little 500? You know, you see at the, uh, at the end of a lot of races, teams have an explosion of emotion, and I didn't think it'd be that intense, but four years, man. It's a long time coming. And, you know, shout out to Gap, great race. You know, they gave us a run for the money, but I had complete faith in Torn to finish that race for us. We all came together and made it happen. It's awesome. And your coach just put a ring on you. What does that mean? I've wanted one of these for a long time. It's awesome. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, congratulations. Go enjoy with your team. Congratulations, Thank 2023 you. champions. Jack, back up to you. Thank you, Evan. Cutters will celebrate this one long into the night. Peyton and Torin, two third year guys, when they first got to Cutters, the first race back in 2021, there were no fans. They wore the gold jerseys for the 2019 champions. They wanted to make it a third straight title, but they couldn't do it. They said this year the green jersey felt better for them. It felt like something they had earned rather than a jersey that wasn't theirs. And they were they were confident. Torin told me, as Torin saying on, on, on a podcast that he believed that having them in that pit that they chose, pit 33, the fans are behind the start finish line, the photos look good. It was a photo finish, and the photos will look great, Hank. Absolutely, Jack. Kudos, big kudos to Cutters. Great race strategy. Sigma Phi Epsilon created the race. They made the race happen, but Cutters, they closed it down. They were safe. They made smart moves, and that end of race strategy, keeping Tor and Cray Mayor off the bike for the last 50 laps, exchanging during a yellow flag, which you almost never see with 10 laps to go, and then Peyton Gaskill sending it off to his fellow senior and Torin Cray Mayor for that, for that sprint finish, a race for the ages. Race for the ages. The timing margins between these top five talk about thinnest of margins. Cutters wins things in first place, one point, or point one three seconds behind is Delta Tau Delta, point two six seconds behind is Sigma Phi Epsilon, a second behind is Chi Alpha, and a second behind is Phi Kappa Psi. I mean, you're top five beside by a second. For Torn Cray Mayor to take the lead and to turn two on that final lap, on that final lap, and Josh Herps trying to slingshot around him, they were wheel to wheel at a time in turn three and four. But Torin, just with that inside line and a little bit more grip on that on that line, got it. But what a sprint finish from all of those teams in there. Delta Tau Delta, again, a dark horse to take it on the podium again. Big kudos to that team for being there until the end. And let's not forget about Kai Alpha, nope. a big dark horse coming in fourth place for the second time in three years. And then the teams, all those teams behind them that were a lap down and caught back up to even compete in that sprint finish. Yeah, it's going to be Kai Alpha. They had three rookies, but four seniors, or, th or three seniors, I should say. Interesting to see how many of those guys return for a fifth year or if it's going to be another case where Ryan Lowe is the only guy coming back for them next year as Jonathan Frazier was their only returner this year. But Frazier was almost in that. He had to burn all of the remaining matches to try and catch up to that group, as did Carson Etnire four Phi Kappa Psi who managed to bring themselves into fifth place. But Sigma Phi Epsilon, let's not sleep no, on what they no, did no. today. Lap 70, they decided to make the race theirs. They wanted to make this race on their terms. And you know what? They did. Did they end up winning the race? No. But they knew what they wanted to do, and they did it. They accomplished it. But in the end, the best sprinter won. That was Torrin Craig Mayer and Cutters. Wow. The teams are embracing each other. They're celebrating over there, and they're going to be on the podium in just a moment. And that's what we love about this. These competitors who trained all year together, they competed against each other. 
this is the one day that they compete against each other. This is one day in April. They're all friends, though. They're all going to go out and drink together, celebrate, and revel together after this emotional, tense, stressful day. I mean, let's let's try and break down the race from, from start to finish. We had a crash in turn two. We were worried potentially maybe turn two would be a problem all throughout the day. Then there was a huge one in 53, on, turn fi on, on, on a lap th 53, I should say, excuse me. Went yellow. There was a brief pause there. There was an issue in the CSF, uh, or in the Wild Aces, excuse me, pit, around turn 189. And, and it was an unbelievable moment all throughout things. I mean, let's take a brief moment to, to thank the people to help make this kind of thing happen. Let's thank our, our sponsors. So let's start off. Thanks to our championship partners, B97, Coca-Cola Consolidated, Pizza X, and the IU Bookstore. We would also like to thank our championship sponsors, Blue Line Media Productions, Campus Inc., Canary Cycleware, Logos Express, Momentum Indy, Lamar Outdoor Advertising, Perfect Parties and Events, Pan Eraser, The Indiana Shop, University Tees, Verve Indiana, The Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Underground Printing, The Sander Bloomington, and Substance Use Intervention Services. Thank you to the partners and the sponsors who helped make a race of this magnitude and this excitement happen. Hank, I mean, I mean, it, it's tough to put to words after that. You thought, I remember last year, after that broadcast, after that race, I thought, it's hard to be this speechless. It's hard to be this speechless after that. Absolutely. Just the, the pure chaos. It wasn't just strong racing. It was smart racing from start to finish. Each team faced their own form of adversity, whether it was a crash, whether, whether it was a bad exchange or a bad burn or needed to, ne needing to catch back up or burning too many matches early. They faced adversity, and the strategy near the end, that is something that we rarely see in the Little 500 with these amateur collegiate cycling racers and these teams training for this one race in the year. They did it. They made it happen. What a high-quality race from start to finish. Incredible. Incredible. Amazing to see what happened there. We're seeing now the teams coming up on stage. <laughs> I don't blame him for sitting down. I'd sit down after having to put in that kind of effort too. I'll have to stand up in a moment to lift something in just a moment. But Sigma Phi Epsilon, I mean, talk about blowing the race up. Kai Alpha mentioned in their interview um, as a Delta Tau Delta that they just blew up the race and no one knew what to kind of do in that immediate moment. And for about 70 laps, they led things. And they nearly ran away with it. They kept themselves in it from till the very end, got pits on the bike in a moment to make a big difference. Wow. And for Drew Gavette and Will Pitts, the two seniors to end their little 500 careers with this race, they can hold their, he they can hold their heads high in the fact that they put everything out on the track today. They didn't win the sprint, but they made the race and they made it a fun race for us to watch. It was fun indeed. Fun, fun indeed. And for the first time since 2019, cutters at the champions. SIGAP, we thought, you know, third in 2021, second last year. You climb that one spot, one you get to go brown, back up. bronze, silver, gold. Oh, they just couldn't quite do it. They're going to be in third place this year. But talk about a trio of years for Pitts and Gavette, where you've got a trio of podium finishes. Not many people can claim that about your three years in the Little 500. Delta Tau Delta, I mean, talk about that. That's absolutely insane. Phi Delta Theta are the only team that broke up a top three over the last three years of these three teams. It has been dynasties for each of them. Josh Herbst, the guy who was on the bike in that last moment, he has a chance to come back. One of only four guys. Pitts actually as well, excuse me, he's a junior. I keep on thinking of him as a senior. Pitts has a chance to come back as well and try and con com complete that, I should say. Judah Thompson, obviously a very young guy for cutters. There's a lot of good youth, and Jacob Kuhn as well. A lot of great youth for both of these teams. For all these teams, I should say. But Delta Tau Delta. There's now, a new name under Jet Black. Del Same guys, though. Delta Tau Delta. Last year, they came in third place, and it was a surprise third place for most yeah. of the field. They were not happy. No. They came off that podium disappointed, angry, with the fire under them to come back. This year, just like SIGEP did last year, came in second. Next year, with a returning Josh Herbst on this team, yeah. they, their goal is to hold up that Borg Warner Trophy and come home with championship. A tough one there for them. They almost had it in the last moment, but credit to Josh Herbst. That guy 
has got a fire in him because he was in that massive crash, flips head over handlebars, gets himself off the ground, completes the lap for an exchange, and gets on the bike and nearly in a sprint finish wins it. But the team that did win it, Cutters, what can you say? Winning the green jersey, qualifying first. Winning the white jersey and winning Spring Series Team Pursuit, the ITT Championships. They were the favorites coming in. Everybody had a big circle around them. And winning as the favorites is not an easy thing to do because everybody's marking you from start to finish. But to come back from SIG up, taking an over half lap advantage and keeping their sprinter fresh until the end, absolute magnificent magnificent strategy and execution by this team. For the first time right there, Craig Mayward lifts that trophy into the windy afternoon sky in Bloomington. In their 39th race as a program, they win their 15th title. An average finish of 3.7 is going to creep up just a little bit more, but you mentioned it. I mean, they were eyes on them from the start. They said at, at, at a event that what were they asked the first thing you do after the race? So they had a victory lap. Not the first thing they did. It was a more of a hug for the team. Craig Mayward did do his victory lap around the track. Had a lot of talk, a lot of confidence, and backed it up. There it is. I mean, you think about cutters, you think about the legacy little 500. It, it, it's one and the same. There's a little 500 bicycle from race director Emily Carrico. What's that moment like when you're the race director and you're alongside all these people who've had such great moments? There's some slight disappointment from the teams in second and third, and then obviously the champions. It is the most proud feeling as race director to hand off that bike, to hand off those trophies to the podium teams, because you know this is what they've been working for. And to see them execute it on track, do what, they, do what they've been trained to do, and see them so emotional with that positivity tears streaming down their faces that is what that job is all about and seeing Emily and Trent give off those awards to those teams I'm sure they are just beaming with joy and pride for these teams well let's try and look back on let's try and look back on, on this race and just kind of the, the craziness that this was from lap one to lap 200 it, it was absolutely insane. Well, we'll leave it here for a moment before we kind of look too far forward. Just a little drinking of the Coke here on stage for these guys. A delightful moment for them. Let's look at how they got to this point. It was remarkable. We saw an incredible turnout of fans on a windy day here this afternoon. But, Hank, just talk me through just your takeaways from today. It was a fast race from, from start to finish. It was chaotic. We knew that the teams that were going to make moves, and they made the moves. We saw cutters go out there, SIGAP go out there, Fight Delta Theta was in there for a while. Teams get lapped to come back. It was a race of attrition. You don't hear that much in this race, but it was, and it came back together beyond beautiful strategy at the end. Teams face adversity and a great sprint finish to end the day with. Cutters takes the victory here. Hank, delighted to be alongside you for this broadcast here today. Exceptional insight, exceptional to share the passion of this moment here with you. My final broadcast as a student at Indiana University, a very special place and very appreciative that I was able to be here for two of these races. Just add a little footnote to the history of this race. Well, I'm going to try and say thank you to the entire production crew. Lily Hunt, our director, our producers, Emma Watson, Lauren Brewer, Galen Clavio, my spotter, Griffin Epstein, our sideline reporters, Evan Kamikow and Abby Heyman. I've been Jack Edwards alongside Hank Duncan. We'll see you next year.